premier motorcycle international event. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It draws the who's who of cycling and the finest riders on two wheels competing, followed by thousands of loyal fans. We tear our insides out to win. You can't think, you can't remember what you do or say. There is no thinking. Our hearts beat, but our minds are dead. It's not easy to lean into turns at over 100 miles an hour. Legalized insanity. 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 He's going to score. What did it all add up to? The most thrilling spectator sport in America. It adds up to life itself. It adds up to the pain of losing and the thrill of winning. To race is to live. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Progressive American Flat Track, the season finale here at Daytona. We are just outside Daytona International Speedway. Turns one and two out here. Uh, the beautiful short track. It's Daytona Flat Track, we'll call it. Getting set to go with our first round of practice. All four classes. That's right, we have four classes here today. The AFT Super Twins will come out first for their round of practice. Six laps for every class in practice and qualifying. After that, AFT Production Twins will come out for practice. AFT Singles and then the Royal Infield Build Train Race Practice. That's what's getting ready to roll onto the racetrack. It is packed in really tight. It is hard. It is still moon dirt. It's white dirt from the moon. They brought it in here just to Daytona International Speedway for the Daytona Flat Track. It's very unique, it's very different, it's very challenging for our riders. The big story is watching these twins on this racetrack for the very first time ever. That's what we are all waiting for, to see how they handle this really tight, really short uh, flat track out here at Daytona International Speedway. They've never been on here before, so it's going to be a handful for our riders. We have 17 entries, it looks like, on my list for the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. They'll be coming out according to the point standings, and we have a championship fight on our hands between the number one of Briar Bauman. He is our points leader right now by nine points over the number nine, the jammer, Jared Meese. Both those on the factory Indian motorcycle. Sammy Halbert, currently third in the point standings. He's on the Coolbeth Nyla Racing Indian. Bronson Bauman, the 37. He could be a contender out here. He went really well at the Laconia short track. So he's one on an Indian on a very short track. Keep your eyes on the 37 of Bronson Bauman. The 44, Brandon Robinson picked up his first ever career victory at the Daytona short track. Keep your eyes also on the 44. That's Brandon Robinson. 92, Brandon Price. He's on the roof systems of Dallas, Texas bike. 23, Jeffrey Carver Jr. in the 67 of Davis Fisher. 20, Jared Vandekoy. The bikes are on the track for the very first time here at Daytona Flat Track. Again, they're out there according to their point standings. Way at the back of the pack is the 9 of Meese. Meese was supposed to be out there second, but he doesn't want to be up there battling with Breyer just yet. They've kind of arced out the corners down here in the very center of the track to uh, make him go out a little bit further. I can see it right here from my perch high on top of turn number four. A little bit harder to see down there at turns one and two. Briar Bauman out there on the number one factory Indian progressive insurance SNS cycle sponsored motorcycle. Briar down the back straight away, the big number one. Chasing him is the 37 younger brother. That's Bronson Bauman. Look at Sammy Halbert really getting his, his weight over that rear wheel, trying to get traction on that rear wheel. Practice is what we're looking at. AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines. Here comes Sammy Halbert looking up the inside of the 37 of Bronson Bauman. That's the battle for second on the racetrack. This is practice. Breyer has the quickest lap so far, 18.245. You can watch the live timing and scoring on the app, on your computer, on your smartphone, on your tablet. That's what I'm looking at up here in the booth. Brandon Price goes way up the racetrack down here in three and four. Sometimes you might have to go slow to go fast. Let off the throttle early, bend it into the corner. When you get about halfway through the corner, grab a handful of that throttle. Breyer's gonna bring out off turn number four. He actually tried to do a wheelie. Couldn't get that front wheel to come up. He's spinning a lot. You can hear him as they go past me. That's group number one of the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. 
Briar Bound with a quick time, 18.245 in this practice session. Sammy Halbert was second, 18.270. Brandon Robinson was third, Jer Jared Meese was fourth, and Jeffrey Carver was fifth. Up next, group number two, same class, AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines. The 27, Robbie Pearson, 62, Dan Bromley. The four, Brian Smith, 79, Dalton Gautier. The five, Jersey Jake Johnson, 95, J.D. Beach. The 12, Jay Maloney, and the 11 of Andrew Luker. And the water truck makes its way back onto the racetrack. They told us they're going to do their best to keep moisture on the racetrack after every session, especially in practice and qualifying. That way these riders get the exact same racetrack. There's no advantage to being in group one or group two of either class. There are four classes racing with us today. Three of them are the AFT classes, and we also added in the Royal Infield build train race program there are four ladies uh, two fill-in ladies that are making it out here for the first time with us at aft we did race those uh, ladies did race at the atlanta short track so we'll see those girls out here in just a few moments so the water truck is out looks kind of like what we do at lima the water truck came out of the uh, pit area make a couple laps around the drags are out there as well they'll drag the track just a little bit it looks like it's really hard really packed in tight it's daytona flat track the season finale out here will de determine two champions this weekend. We've already picked our first champion. Dallas Daniels earned his first ever AFT championship last weekend in the AFT singles class, but the other two championships are up for grabs. James Raspoli has a pretty commanding lead in the production twins, but it's not over yet. He has to be at least 25 points ahead when we get done tonight if he wants to win his first ever AFT championship or... The other championship contender is the one of Corey Texter. He needs to go out there and win and hope Raspoli has a bad night. So it's going to be possibly determined tonight or maybe tomorrow night. Same with the Super Twins. Again, Breyer has a nine-point advantage over Jared Meese as they come into the season finale weekend. Breyer uh, has six wins, 12 podiums. 274 points. Second in the point standings is Jared Meese with 265. He has five wins and 10 podiums so far here in 2020. Third in the point standings, 69. Sammy Albert has 208 points. Track prep continues out here at Daytona Flat Track. Fourth in the point standings, Bronson Bauman. Bronson has five top fives so far this season, looking for his uh, first win of the season. His best finish was uh, two third place finishes at Williams Grove and at the Atlanta Short Track, one. Fifth in the points, Brandon Robinson. 159 points. Robinson has seven top fives this year. Missed the uh, Dallas half mile two after having a broken right uh, foot in his uh, bone in his right foot there at the Dallas uh, Devils Bowl Speedway on the first night. So he, he did miss one round. He's back out here racing, walking around through the pit area on some crutches, but he's out here. He's a true trooper out here trying to move up in the point standings if he can. Robinson currently in the fifth place. Brandon Price. So sixth in the point standings, 159. Actually tied with his teammate, Brandon Robinson. They both have 159 points. Jeffrey Carver sitting in the seventh spot. He picked up the win at the last race at the Charlotte Half Mile on Friday night. Carver brings the momentum here into Daytona Flat Track to see what he can do. Davis Fisher is sitting eighth in the point standings. Jared Vandekoy is ninth, and Robbie Pearson is tenth. So tenth on back are coming out in this next group. The uh, track crew pulls off of the racetrack. Again, the riders in group two. Of the AFT Super Twins, presented by Vincent Hines class, the 27 of Bugs Pearson, 62, Dan Bromley. Four is Brian Smith on the factory, Harley Davidson, Vance and Hines entry. 79, Dalton Gautier is Brian Smith's teammate. Five, Jake Johnson, 95, J.D. Beach on the Essence and Yamaha. The 62 by lost power in the pit area. He's not rolling out here onto the track just yet. 12, Jay Maloney, 11, Andrew Luker. 62 bike not able to start. 62 sitting in the pit area. They had problems at the last round. If you think back to Charlotte, had problems in both sessions. And he turns his motorcycle around. They're going back looking for that backup motorcycle. So Bromley's not making it out for practice. Bugs Pearson on the 27 bike on the front straightaway, taking him on into turn number one. There goes a dejected Dan Bromley back to his roof systems of Dallas, Texas pit area. Dalton Gautier is at the very back of the pack on the 79 factory Harley Davidson Vance and Hines entry. 27, Bugs Pearson, your leader on the racetrack. He's coming off a of turn number four right now. Smith chasing him down. Oh, Andrew Luker just about comes off the motorcycle. Actually stalls the motorcycle with that rear brake. Now he gets it going again. They have electric start on these things. Some of them do. 27, Bugs Pearson taking a look over his shoulder. That's what it looked like. He reached up and grabbed the electric starter. I'm not going to say that he does or not, but that's exactly what it looked like. It looked like Luker stalled the bike on that last lap in turn three and four. Gets it going again. 
Pearson out front, the 27 bike. Herakley racing on the 27 Country Saloon entry. The four bike, Brian Smith, the five jersey, Jake Johnson chasing it down. There's the 12 bike, Jay Maloney off of turn number four. Leaders on the back straightaway. This is practice for the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Heinz Glass. White flag is out from Big PR Flagman. These sessions are four, I'm sorry, six laps apiece. They've extended it from four to six for all of our classes. A little bit of a breaking bump hole coming up in the inside of turn number three. Checker flag is out. Briar Bauman still in the top spot. The number one rider still is your quick time here in practice. 18.245. No change up the leaderboard until you get to the seventh position. Rob Pearson, who led every lap of that one, is seventh quick in practice, 18.689. That is it for group number two of practice. Again, Briar Bauman has the quick time, 1.9. I'm sorry, 18.245. 18.245 is the quick time in practice. As the track crew comes back onto the racetrack, they're going to do that between every group here in practice and qualifying to make sure it's fair and equal to all of our competitors. So the water truck comes out and also the drags come onto the racetrack once again. Daytona flat track. Up next will be the AFT production twins practice session. It'll be six laps each. There are two groups in the production twins class. We have 12 entries out here today. They'll be coming out according to their point standings. Group number one is the 43 of James Raspoli, the one Corey Texter, 25 Ben Lau, 68 Ryan Barnes, 64 Danny Eslick, and the 49 Chad Coase. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, AFT Production Twins, their first round of practice is up next right here from Daytona Flat Track. Let's get ready for our main event in American Flat Track. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one duel for the win down to the last lap. This is what I grew up watching. Riders talk over 130 mile per hour, mile race track, hands off the handlebars. I love it. All right, production twins coming up in just a moment. Still doing a little bit of track prep, but let's look at the point standings as we come into the season finale out here at Daytona International Speedway, Progressive American Flat Track. The 43, James Rocker Rispoli is your points leader coming in. He's got seven wins, 13 top fives, and 11 podiums. He's had a great year so far. A worst finish for Rispoli is a fifth place finish at the Springfield Mile. Other than that, everything else has been a first or a second. You throw in one fourth place at the Charlotte Half Mile. Rispoli, he is the championship leader are coming in. Sitting second in the points is the number one rider, Corey Texter. He's on the g, &G Racing Yamaha. He's at 247 points, so he's 38 points behind the leader. Corey has three wins, 11 top fives here in 2020. Third in the point standings is Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod. He's on a Yamaha. He's got 206 points, so the championship will be determined between the 43 and the one. Ben Lau has one win here in 2020, 11 top five finishes. Sitting fourth in the point standings is the 68. That's Revan Ryan Varge, third generation flat tracker. He's from Moton, Pennsylvania, 199 points. He won the season opener at Volusia, and he also won at the Springfield Mile. Uh, keep your eyes on Varnes, 68 bike. Looking to get a podium finish here. The bikes start firing up over there in the holding, holding pen. Fifth in the point standings is 64, Danny Eslick. Eslick is, has seven top five finishes here in 2020. He is also a four-time Daytona 200 winner, which is on just on the other side of the hill where I'm sitting at and most of you fans are at. Production Twins rolling onto the racetrack. Here they come. The 43 leads them out on the Harley-Davidson XG 750. Chad Coast at the back of the pack. He's letting everybody else go around him. He wants to go out there all by himself, get some clean real straight. We got one rider down. Looks like the throttle's hanging on the 64 of Danny Esley. He, maybe he's just out there having some fun. Now he gets back on board as Kawasaki. That's the Scott Power Sports. Madrain racing Kawasaki. So Esley threw it, threw it away down there. 
in turns one and two. Gets back on the motorcycle. He's way at the back of the pack. You hear the RPMs. They grab a handful coming off the corners. Corey Texas are really sideways down here in turn number four. That's like near the back of the pack on the 64. That uh, He's actually at the tail of the field. We've got another rider down in turn number two. It's Chad Coast on his Harley Davidson. He gets himself picked up. Gets out of the way. We keep racing until we see a red or a checkered. No, it's just practice, but that's what we keep doing out here. Corey Texter. Texter has the top spot right now in practice. 19.919. Take a look at the replay of what happened. We're right here in the middle of the corner. A 49 just goes down kind of by himself. Trying to figure out this moon dirt at Daytona Flat Track. They're racing uh, against each other right now, but they're just practicing. This is just practice for you folks just tuning in. It's Corey Texer with a quick time, 19.771 for C-Tex. The reigning champion, that's why he has the number one plate. 43 with Spoli. Exact same time. Check it out. The Corey Texter and Rispoli, 19.771 for the 43 and the 1. And that didn't last very long. Ben Lau goes ahead now. The 25, the quickest bike on the racetrack. Ben Lau, 19.710 as the checkered flag comes out. Ben Lau just about got second at the last race, ended up in that third position. So right as I said, that Corey Texter on the last lap goes to the top spot. C-Tex, the number one rider, 19.513. Here comes Eslick picking up his checkered flag. So Corey Texter has the quick time in practice, 19.513. Ben Lau is second. James Rispoli is third. Varnes is fourth. Chad Coase is fifth. And Danny Eslick fifth here in practice. So... Corey Texter is doing what he needs to do, and he's come out here and win and hope that uh, the 43 bike has a tough time. So C-Tex in the top spot, 19.513. 25 points up for grabs for the win. All right. The water truck's coming back out onto the racetrack. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, Group 2, AFT Productions wins practice. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sport side-by-side -side of American Flat Track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. Arai Helmets started racing in America and flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Arai, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, AraiAmericas.com. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of American flat track. No other tire company has won more championships than Dunlop. And what we learn from our investment in racing is rolled into our street tires, such as the Dunlop K180 a street-legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. Dunlop, the official tire of American flat track. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! There's the old saying, you don't know how fast you can go until you fall down, and <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. I'm doing a sport that I love, and we all know it can go bad. And when those times that it does go bad, you want to be safe. Just looking at the helmet, looking at the craftsmanship, you can tell why it's the best helmet out there. When I put the helmet on, I know that, that I have the best in the business on my head. And for me, I've been wearing Arai helmets my entire career, and, and I'm pretty proud of that.
is the water. Track prep continues down here in turns one and two. Got a little bit slick down there, a little bit too much moisture. They're working it in for us. Up next will be group number two coming out according to the point standings uh, to go back in the point standings and take a look. We talked about S Lake is fifth. Sixth in the point standings was just out there. Chad Kosey's on the XG750. Seventh in the points is the 42, Jeremiah Duffy. He will lead out the next group. Duffy's got 141 points. His best finish was a fourth earlier this year at the uh, Devil's Bowl there in Dallas, Texas. So keep your eyes on the 42. 96, Cody Johncox, Attica, New York. He's on the sunny side cycle. Yamaha, his best finish was a sixth at the Volusia half mile, round number two. Nick Armstrong is on the 60 bike. He is not in this group. The 50 bike is up next. He is 10th in the point standings. That's Jimmy McAllister from Petaluma, California. Jimmy looking for a, uh, a good finish out here today. His best finish coming in was the 11th place finish. The 175, Pat Buchanan from White Lake, Michigan. Pat had a 7th place finish at the Atlanta Short Track 2. Behind him will be the 10 of Johnny Lewis. He's on the uh, Royal Enfield Motorcycle. It's the FT Twin. It's a developmental motorcycle. He came out and was on fire with the first weekend when he got here. He was at the Williams Grove Half Mile a couple of days after picking up that motorcycle. Finished 6th and 7th at Williams Grove, and they're developing that motorcycle for future use here with American Flat Track. Also coming out is the 123. That is Shelby Miller. Shelby's currently in the, the 25th spot in the point standings. His best finish was a ninth at the Charlotte Half Mile. So Shelby Miller will be on the 123 bike. This is group number two. It's the AFT Production Twins class. Still doing a little track prep down there in turns one and two, dragging the dirt just a little bit around. They put some moisture on it. Now again, trying to keep the track fresh, just like they do at the Lima Half Mile. So they're just turning it up just a little bit down there at the far end of the racetrack. We do have uh, opening ceremonies coming up 6.30 p.m. on the Eastern Time Zone, so if you're paying attention, I'd also like to say hello to Chris and all the folks listening in down in Brazil. We have uh, followers down there in Brazil checking out the American Flat Track races Fans all around the planet watching in right now on Facebook. We'll be switching over to Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold right before the main events here today, just like every round of the American Flat Track Series. It's the progressive American Flat Track season finale, though, here at the Daytona Flat Track. Just outside turns one and two. There's a good look at it from the high on top of turn number four right by my booth. That's a good a shot right there. Doing a little bit more track prep. We'll get back into the practice sessions here. Up next after this will be AFT singles practice, followed by the Royal Enfield build, train, race practice groups. And then we'll have two rounds of qualifying for the three AFT classes and qualifying for the Royal Enfield build, train, race program. And then we'll have qualifying round two for the three AFT uh, classes and then the main event for the Royal Enfield build, train, race program. Still doing a little track prep down here in turns uh, one and two at the far end of the track from where I'm at. Don't forget to stop by the American Flat Track Clothing Company. Stop by and check out the event shirts there down there. They've got two different colors available. Also have some previous race shirts on sale down there. They've got the Sideburn Magazine, the official magazine of American Flat Track. They've got it for sale down there at the souvenir stand. Also our friends with the Rookie Class of 79, Rookies of 79, they have some cool stuff on sale down there to help raise money for riders to get injured, injured in our sport. So stop by and check those out. They've got some really neat stuff. Before they had some uh, MotoGP items for sale, I picked up a number plate, a Mark Marquez number plate, last weekend up in Charlotte. So stop by and see what they have. Charlie Roberts and the gang have a booth set up over there in the fan zone right behind the grandstands in turns one and two. Get this track prep situated, and so we'll be on that racetrack here real soon. Again, Production Twins Group 2 will be coming up next. So track prep continues over here in turns 1 and 2. When that track is ready to go, we'll fire them up and turn them loose. Looks like the drags are coming back this way. All right, looks like the drags are pulling off. Up next, group number two, AFT Production Twins, the 42, Jeremiah Duffy, 96, Cody John Cox, 50, Jimmy McAllister, 175, Pat Buchanan, 10, Johnny Lewis, and the 123, Shelby Miller.
So again, they're dragging the racetrack just a little bit, uh, working it in, having a little bit of an issue down there at turns one and two. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in two minutes to Daytona Flat Track right here outside turn number one and two of Daytona International Speedway. Royal Enfield made its first motorcycle in 1901. In 2020, Royal Enfield takes its first steps into the fastest globally growing motorsport, flat track racing. This partnership is just the beginning. For more information, visit royalenfield.com. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people who do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. The ones who never stop. The ones who never quit. Around and around. We don't make the champions, but we do make the tires. We, we, we are done off. Are done off. Done off. Hey everybody, it's Randy Dye with Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days are back again in October with bigger and better savings. Get 0% financing on a new Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, or Durango. 0% on a Chrysler Pacifica. How about a Jeep Renegade for $169 a month or a Wrangler for $299 a month and a Grand Cherokee for $269 a month? Get a brand new Ram for just $279 per month. So shop online with Easy Purchase or come visit us at Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! We're just outside Daytona National Speedway turns one and two right here at the Daytona Flat Track. So they just had two more laps with these uh, trucks, and we'll turn out the next group onto the racetrack. AFT Production Twins, their practice session. Only one round of practice for all four classes here today. One round of practice, two rounds of qualifying for all three AFT classes. One round of qualifying for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. That program will extend next year. They're looking to have eight riders in that uh, field next year. And they're also going to do some road racing. So if you want to get more information on that, get them a hold of them on social media. Get a hold of Bree with Royal Infield. Johnny Lewis, Moto Anatomy, has been a big part of that program, helping these ladies. They practiced up at his track the last few days, getting set to go here for the Daytona Flat Track. Trucks will be pulling off. Group number two set to come out for practice. The quick time so far in practice for the production twins is Corey Texter, 19.513. I know it's just practice, but that's what everybody will be shooting for. 42, Jeremiah Duffy. That's the Sammy O racing Kawasaki. He's first to roll onto the racetrack. 96, Cody Johncox. 50, Jimmy McAllister. 175, Pat Buchanan. The 10, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. And the 123, Shelby Miller. Those are the bikes scheduled to come out. And the championship still up for grabs between the 43 and the 1. There's a 38-point advantage right now. 43 has the points lead, looking for his first ever AFT championship. James the Rocket Rispoli, his competition, the only one that can beat him right now for the championship is our defending champ. It's the one bike as the bikes start right now. Corey Texter sitting second in the point standing, so it's going to be Harley versus Yamaha for the championship. And it's really cool to see the twins and how they handle this Daytona flat track. It's really short. A little bit less than a quarter mile, it looks like. And they call it moon dirt. It's white dirt to resemble the old beach track and also municipal stadium. Trucks are pulling off the track now. Motorcycles will be pulling on any second. Please stay hydrated if you're out here at the racetrack with us. Please stay hydrated. It's very warm out here. Drink plenty of fluids, plenty of water. Again, the quick time in production twins, 19.513. That was Corey Texter. Group two set to roll onto the racetrack any second. 
Track is clear. Here they come. There is Raymond Rizzo with the yellow flag down there. Assistant flagman, our pastor, racing pastor. Findingthefinish.com if you want to help out Raymond Rizzo. He does help our riders each and every week. Look at Pat Buchanan. He's not messing around on the 175 bike. He doesn't know what that yellow flag means. Doesn't mean nothing to Pat. Buchanan used to be national number 75 back in the day. It's been ice racing every stop racing on the circuit. Now he's back here on the American Flat Track Series in this production Twins class. Kind of a stepping stone up to the Super Twins class. Duffy out in front, the 42 bike. John Cox right there in second on the racetrack. That's a Yamaha. Duffy on a Kawasaki. Pat Buchanan also on a Kawasaki. Jimmy McAllister, the 50 bike, also Kawasaki rider. Look at Buchanan up the inside, shoving his way through. That's what short track racing is about right there. A bit of bar banging going on early in this practice session. Go in there, kind of rub shoulders, rub elbows with your uh, compadre that's out there on the track. That's what you have to do sometimes on a short track. We haven't seen much of it yet. It's only practice. When we get into the racing, I'm sure we're going to see some more of that. Sometimes that's the way to make a pass on such a tight track. The 10 bike pulling off the racetrack. Johnny Lewis going back to the pit area on the Royal Infield. 42 continues to lead this group. Jeremiah Duffy. Should we call him the Bullfrog? Is that too easy? Duffy on the 42. Pat Buchanan on the 175. John Cox on the 96. White flag is out. Jeremiah Duffy on the 42 bike. Buchanan behind him on the 175. Battle for the top spot. Buchanan in the top spot. Last lap by was the quick time. 175, Pat Buchanan. New quick time in practice. 19.389, faster than Corey Texter. So the track's getting faster. These riders are getting more aggressive. The 175, Pat Buchanan takes the top spot. 19.242, the last lap was his fastest lap for the 175, 19.242. 2-4-2, your quick time here in practice for Pat Buchanan. Second was Jeremiah Duffy. Third, Cody Johncox. That slides everybody from group number one down a few spots. So Corey Texter currently fourth. Johnny Lewis fifth. Ben Lau sixth. James Raspoli seventh. Ryan Varnes is eighth. Chad Coast ninth. And Jimmy McAllister is in tenth. All right, they're going to keep on rolling. They said they did a little bit too much track maintenance last time. The track's still good, so we're going to keep on rolling. Up next will be the AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Coming out first will be your brand new 2020 AFT singles champion, the 32 Dallas Daniels. He's already locked it up. He's got eight wins this season, including six in a row. The last time he was beat was Williams Grove half mile night number one when his teammate beat him. So keep your eyes on the 32, Dallas Daniels, your 2020 AFT singles champ. Coming out second is the 18, that's Max Whale. Third is Henry Wiles on the 17, Morgan Mishner on the 13. 15, Mikey Rush, 48, Trent Lowe, 105, Brandon Kitchen. 38, the Dean Machine, Tanner Dean, 211, Trevor Bruner. And the 54 is Michael Enderbitt, who knows the bikes on the racetrack. 29 entries here today in the AFT singles class. Only the fastest 16 will make it to tonight's main event. Daniels picking up the green flag. First time by is a yellow flag. Kind of like a siding lap. Thirty-two. Dallas Daniels leads the way. Killer Whale right there in second. That's Max Whale from Australia. There's Wiles back at competition. He sat out in Charlotte. Had a some pain in his lower back from the Atlanta short track. Wiles back out on the RMR American Honda entry, the 17 bike. Estenson Yamaha out front. Kawasaki of Maxwell second on the racetrack. Mikey Rush won his first ever Grand National down here at the Daytona Short Track. That's that other racetrack, though, not this one. He has one here before. Daniels in the top spot. Maxwell has the quick time, though. The killer whale has the fast time. 
He's actually tracking down Dallas Samuels now. Eighteen. Quick time here in practice. One eight point six four three. One eight point six four three. Down the back straightaway, Daniel's starting to have his hands full with the 18 of Max Whale. 17 of Wiles, third on the racetrack. Checkered flag is out. New rider at the top spot here in practice. Right there near the end, Trent Lowe goes to the top spot, 18.579. Trent Lowe has the quick time in practice. Max Whale second, Henry Wiles third, Dallas Daniels is fourth. So that was group number one, AFT Singles, presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. We have three groups of singles riders. They are going to do a little track maintenance right now. They did skip it before that last group. They're going to bring out the track maintenance group one more time. Here comes the crew onto the racetrack. So we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, group number two, practice for the AFT Singles class right here at Daytona Flat Track. To promote your continued health and safety, public health experts recommend all guests and employees wear a face covering, maintain social distancing of six feet between you and other parties, clean your hands often with soap and water, or with alcohol-based sanitizer. When coughing or sneezing, cover your mouth and nose. Seek medical attention if you're experiencing flu-like symptoms and avoid touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. Help keep each other safe. Please wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Thank you for joining us for another exciting evening of American Flat Track. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Cometa Gasket is the official gasket of American Flat Track. For decades, American Flat Track twins and singles champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometa Gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic Gasket, sealing championships since 1989. We're looking at a Bauman Brothers 1-2 and their adopted home state. It's over and the Bauman Brothers do it. They sweep it here at Williams Grove. Bronson rode for Indian last year, and he proved that he deserved a spot, and I kind of did the same. So being brothers, we kind of share more information than other, other people I would in the pits. Briar Bauman, fastest qualifier, being quick all night. Briar getting notes and exchanging with his brother Bronson. I kind of felt some things out on the track, and, and I actually had a pretty big moment that I didn't want anyone else to get into. I just only shared it with him. Um, so, yeah, I kind of gave him an idea of what the track was like and, and what to stay away from. I think flat track as a whole is a huge family. So when you have your family there, it makes it even better. And our parents, they're the type of parents that will do anything for us. I mean, they'll give us a shirt off their backs anytime in need. And it's really an honor to have them here with us at the factory Indian spot just because it's not just a relief on us, it's a relief on them because we made it, really. It's kind of funny because a lot of people used to say that to me. Your boys are gonna go, they're gonna make it, they're gonna make it, and I'd be like, oh, we'll see. I'm gonna blame her right here, right now. It was all her idea. I actually did not want to, and she was pretty adamant about taking them racing. At their first race was the Ricky Graham Memorial, and that was the downfall. They loved it. They, they loved it. That was kind of our leverage point to raising good young men because they knew they had to maintain a B average, get their schoolwork done, their chores. Then they could go ride. And they rode every day. And they just kept getting better and better. I mean, starting out on mini bikes, and it's like to be able to be on a factory ride and Indians at the pinnacle right now, it's yeah, I mean, what more do you say? It was, it's phenomenal for both boys to be there. When they were younger, I couldn't even watch. I, I couldn't. It would be like I had a small window, and if I saw them go by on both sides of the track, that was good. It's intense. I, I do a lot of praying, that's for sure. 
just like most parents in the sport, they dedicate everything to, uh, to our, our craft. It's always just, hey, my kids love to do this, and we're going to support that. Well, group number two came out a little bit early on the racetrack. The 49, Chad Coast, 52, Shayna Texter, 51, Cole the baller, 99, Kevin Stallings, 44, Cameron Smith, 19, James Ott from California, 169, Aiden Rusev is the 11, Andrew Luker, 96, Jesse Jenish, and the 14th, Jacob Lehman. Those are the bikes on the racetrack. It's group number two of practice for our AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorney. Leaders in turn number three right now, the yellow Suzuki. It's the Wally Brown Racing Suzuki. Last weekend at Charlotte, that thing was all white. Today, it is all yellow. The only Suzuki that's racing with us this week. Actually, this entire season here at 2020. Chad Coast has the quick time. The 49 has the quick time here in practice. Shayna Texter moves up to second, so the track is getting faster. The riders are getting more comfortable. Shayna Texter in the second spot here in practice. 49 leading this group has the quick lap so far. The 49 bike, 18.434. Shayna Texter on the 52s, 18.576, second fast in practice. White flag is out for the California kid, the 49 bike. Still has a quick time here in this practice session. Leaders in turn number three right now. Checkered flag will come out. Right there is the checker for the 49, Chad Coast, the 52, Shane and Sector. We got one rider down in turn now, two riders down in turn three, two riders down. Zabala picks himself up, so does Cameron Smith, the 44 bike. And the 51, 51 stalled the engine on the last lap. No harm, no foul, we keep on trucking. So the 51 does a little soil sampling down here in the middle of three and four, and the 44 did some soil sampling on the way into turn number three. So a little bit slick out there in some spots. But how about uh, the California kid, Chad Coase, has the quick time in practice now, 18.434. We're going to keep on going into the next group. We'll take a look at this replay. Riders going down in turn number three. Looks like the uh, 44 is already down. Here comes the 51, just losing it right in the middle of the corner. Up next, group number three, AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys, 151, Tyler Reggio, 31, Dylan Bell, 75, Blake Lomas, 138, David Wigan. 46, Shane Narbonne. I think that might be the first time we've seen him this season. 34, Brian McRoberts. 153, Aaron Kennedy. 161, Casey Sisko. And the 123, Shelby Miller. Group three of practice for the AFT singles class. Royal Infields coming up next. It's group number three of the AFT singles on the track first. Six laps. Forty-nine has the top spot here in practice. One eight point four three four. But they're all shooting for out front. Fifty-one, one fifty-one. Tyler Raggio, thirty-one. Dylan Bell's all over him like a cheap suit. It's just practice. Blake Lomas from South Carolina, third on the racetrack. Sun starting to set down here. Outside the back straightaway. One rider down in turn number three. Picks himself up. That's David Wiggin from Oklahoma. Gets out of harm's way. We keep on trucking. Leaders are on the back straightaway. Actually, the 133 keeps the bike rolling. David Wiggin drops to the back of the pack. Here's your leader bringing him off the floor. 151, Tyler Raggio. Raggio on the 151 has company. Trying to get by. 31 of Bell. Here comes the 75, Blake Lomas. Lomas trying to go around the outside. A little bit longer way around the track. Gets by Bell. Now he'll set his sights on the 151. Might be slowing him down just a little bit as the white flag is out in this practice session. Lead it out of the back straightaway. There's a pass for the top spot. Blake Lomas gets on by on the 75 bike. Lomas up to eighth on the speed charts. Got by those two slower riders, they're slower to him. He picks up the checkered flag. 
Lum was eight quick here in this practice session. 18.681. 18.681 for Lomas. He made his way through the field, actually passed the 151 of Raggio and passed the 31 of Bell to get that spot. Take a look at the replay of the 133, David Wigan, who went down just a few moments ago. We're going to keep on going. The Royal Infields are coming up next, so we're going to keep on trucking. There's a look at the 133 doing, you know, checking out the moon dirt. Want to see if he can take some of that home with him back to Oklahoma. Up next will be the Royal Infield Build Train Race Program for ladies. They build their bikes, they maintain their bikes, and they get to race their bikes. They were scheduled to race with us a few times this season. Only got to uh, once so far. That was at the Atlanta Short Track. This is the second go-around for these ladies. 23 is a fill-in rider. It's Trisha Dahl. All right, let's, let's go check in down there at the victory podium that has not been put up yet. That Kristen beat Kristen. What's going on down there? Well, hey, Scotty Dubler, a little uh, media check down here, if you will, as these ladies head out onto the track. Now, if you want to follow Royal Enfield on social media, they've been doing a really good job of uh, posting details about the Build Train Race program. Also, you can follow American Flat Track on Instagram. Lots of uh, insider posts, behind-the-scenes posts of what's going on during race weekend. And, of course, if you're in the Daytona area, tickets are still available pick up your tickets for the racing tonight and tomorrow thanks a lot that's Kristen B from NBCSN on the track the ladies Royal Enfield build train race program 88 Mallory Lee she is uh, formerly raced hooligans on singles and twins motorcycles the 28 Trisha Dahl she's a Minnesota lady she has some flat track experience also the 31 Jill DeShane she was the winner at the Atlanta short track she's from Rogers Minnesota and then also out there is the 13, Melissa Paris. She's from Oceanside, California, and she's a road racer. So the 13 bike out in front, that's Melissa Paris. Some of these other ladies starting to pick up the pace just a little bit. They'll get more comfortable. Next time out, they will be out here for qualifying, and then the time after that will be their main event. Again, thanks to Royal Enfield for bringing these ladies on board. They're trying to expand this program next year to eight riders. Be part of the American Flat Track Series at some events. Also uh, talked to Bree down there in the pit area, and she said they're talking about doing a road race series next year. So get a hold of those folks on social media. Uh, we know the pits are closed to uh, spectators, so if you're interested, if you're at home, they're also going to have a female ambassador as part of the series next year in flat track. The 13 bike out front, Melissa Paris. Her quick time, 22.513. Jill DeShane up there, up to second on the 31 bike. She's getting more comfortable. This track is very flat, quite a bit different than the Atlanta short track where they raced that last with us. See the blonde hair flying out the helmet of the, the leader, Melissa Paris, the 13 bike. All the way from Oceanside, California. Looks like the 31's getting more comfortable. She's taking over the top spot as the white flag comes out. This will be wrapping up our first round of practice out here today. Later on the back straightaway. 13, Melissa Paris. 31, Jill DeShane. 88, Mallory Lee. And the 23, Trisha Dahl. D-A-H-L, if you want to check her out on social media. These ladies build these bikes, maintain their bikes. They all start with the exact same budget. And this is what they have to work with when they come here to the Daytona Flat Track. So the 31, quickest here in practice, Jill DeShane. 21.470, 21.470. So that wraps up our entire round of practice for all four classes. When we get back on the racetrack here in just a few moments, we'll have the AFT Super Twins qualifying round number one. Looks like a five-minute break for you fans that are here. Go down there, check out the T-shirt booth, American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Get the event T-shirt, the season finale shirts down there, Progressive American Flat Track shirts. Get them while you can. They have two different colors of the event shirts. They've got other merchandise on sale right here at Daytona Flat Track. We'll be back in five minutes. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. In accordance with CDC guidelines, we have enhanced sanitation procedures and implemented additional measures for social distance spacing and screening. Therefore, we strongly suggest that all guests wear a face mask, clean your hands often with soap and water or with alcohol-based sanitizer, and maintain social distancing of six feet between you and other parties. We appreciate your cooperation during this unprecedented time help keep each other healthy and safe. We're glad you're here with us for another great evening of American flat track racing. From the maker of your favorite IPAs comes a voodoo ranger unlike any you've seen before. 
and it tastes like freedom. ODI, the world leader in grip technology. Dedicated to providing the best grip for your type of racing, including flat track and V-twin, ODI developed a patented lock-on grip system, delivering easy installation and 100% slip-free performance guaranteed. ODI. Visit us at odigrips.com. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Hey guys, Jared Vanderkoy, 21 years old, riding for the Factory Harley Davidson Vance and Heinz team. I've been racing motorcycles ever since I was 10 years old. Started riding when I was 3, but then started taking it serious up until I was 10. The sport of flat track in general is, you know, crazy. 100 mile an hour, bar banging action, you know, people are getting sprayed, roosted, fucked around on their motorcycle. It's definitely a thrill. You gotta get out here and see it in person. The prestige of riding for the factory Harley team is awesome because growing up, you looked up to those guys, you know, the Scotty Parker, the Jay Springsteen, and now to say you're one of those guys, I still don't believe it. The team and I work very well together and it's very motivating to me to be able to talk to those guys on a personal level and understand each other on race day to make the changes that we need to go to the front. Oh! Vanderkoy goes down. They say they call me Captain Chaos. Well, I feel like I'm a pretty conservative rider. I do get a little Western sometimes, so you gotta take it easy. But sometimes you know, gotta know when to hang it out. When you're out there racing, you're trying to find that edge. You know, you're pushing your limits, what your bike is capable of, what you're capable of, and what the track's capable of. So you gotta find the edge of all three of those and somehow put it together. It's very difficult, definitely, you know, if you're struggling that day, you're not in it mentally or physically or whatever the deal is. So it's on those days and making it the best is what I strive for. My 2019 season, I couldn't ask for more as far as, you know, the strides that the Harley team has made this year. We've been working every weekend. We've got four fourths this year in 2019, so we've been so close to the box out of two of those. It's crazy, and just I've never stepped foot on the box in this class, so that's something we're striving for. Dunlop is proud to be the official tire of American Flat Track. No other tire company has won more championships than Dunlop. And what we learn from our investment in racing is rolled into our street tires, such as the Dunlop K180, a street legal version of the aggressive DT3 flat track tire. Dunlop, the official tire of American flat track. Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas is a commercial and industrial roofing and sheet metal company based out of Dallas, Texas that proudly supports the American flat track racing series. For more information, go to roof-systems.net or give us a call at 469 469- Seven three zero two zero four three. Inside every Yamaha lives the heart and soul of a competitor. The DNA of a champion. When you ride with us, it revs your heart and becomes a part of you too. Track AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Eyes. It is qualifying time. These guys are qualifying for their semifinals. How they finish up in qualifying rounds one or two will be how they get into their semifinals. Oh, Briar Bauman throws it down in turn number three. So does Sammy Halbert. Briar down and Sammy Halbert's down. Briar's still on the ground trying to get a red flag. 
Sammy Alberts there as well. Red flag is out. So two riders, the top two actually throwing it down in turn number three. Briar Bauman looks like he gets up. He throws a thumbs up to Sammy. He's hauling for his mechanic. Here they come onto the track. Sammy turns his 69 motorcycle around. So Briar throws it down on, on the ground, leading that one. Says a little bit slick going into turn number three. Sammy Hubbard also went down the 69 bike. Let's take a look at a replay. Oh, the, the one bike just took off when they stuck the starter shaft into the side of the motorcycle. The bike was definitely in gear. Here's a look at the replay. There's Breyer going down. Very unusual to see. We don't see Breyer fall off very much. We've never had twin motorcycles out here before. They're all learning it. And the track's continuing to change. It will so all night long. So the one bike threw it down first, and the 69 went down. Also probably got on the brakes a little bit too hard to avoid you know, running into the number one rider of Breyer Bauman. Briar's going to lead him out. Here they come. Sammy spins it back around, does a 360 right in front of Bronson. Bikes are rolling on the track. The one, Briar Bauman, nine, Jared Meese at the very back. 69, Sammy Halbert, 37, Bronson Bauman. 44, Brandon Robinson, 92 is Brandon Price. 23, Jeffrey Carver Jr., our most recent winner. 67, Davis Fisher, and the 20, Jared Vandekoy. Briar out front. Breaking apart just a little bit right here in turn number four. They get hard on the throttle. Oh, another rider down right here in turn number four. It's the 23 of Jeffrey Carver. He's trying to get the uh, pull the clutch in. He still has the bike running. And now the red flag comes out. So the red flag is out for the 23. The wizard, Jeffrey Carver. The winner at the Charlotte Half Mile on the ground. Looks like he reached up to try to shut the motorcycle off, and now he gets on, gets on up to his feet. No harm, no foul for the 23. The wizard, Jeffrey Carver, Jr., Trying to stop everybody else over there at the uh, hot box. Me still circling back around. Trying to keep that thing rolling. They are liquid-cooled motorcycles. Bronson goes over there to the infield to talk to Steve Moorhead. And Jeffrey's running his motorcycle back to the pit area. Brian Bigelow takes off to meet him on the, uh, with the 23 bike. See if there's anything wrong with it. Looked like the foot peg rubber may have slid off the left side of the motorcycle. Bigelow has that in his hands now. Try to put that back on. That's for safety, so there's not a sharp piece of metal sticking out of the side of the motorcycle. The nine just makes it back over to the uh, hot and cold box. We'll have a little restart here. It looks like a couple of riders looking to put on some tear-offs. Kenny Coolbath trying to knock some dirt off of the 69 bike, who uh, was one of the riders that went down that first red flag. Track's a little bit slick, a little bit treacherous. These riders, first time out here on these twins, trying to figure it out. Fast time in practice for the uh, Super Twins was the one. Uh, Briar Bauman won 8.245. We haven't even got a complete lap out here yet, so we still have six laps for our Super Twins. Okay, you'll fire up the motorcycles. They'll send them back out. The 23 just comes to life. Briar's going to lead them out. Here they come. Briar out front, the one, 69, Sammy Halbert, 37, Bronson Bauman, 92, Brandon Price, 20, Jared Vandekoy, 44, Brandon Robinson, 67, Davis Fisher, 23, Jeffrey Carver at the back of the pack, the nine, Jared Mees. Here they go. This is qualifying, how they finish in qualifying, rounds one or two will put them into their semifinal. Takes a lot of finesse around this racetrack. Terry Poog used to get around the Daytona flat track better than anybody. And he leaned over as far as he could coming off the corners with his body and get that motorcycle pointed, get it stood upright, and then grab a handful of throttle. That's a single cylinder motorcycle. It's a little bit different on these big twins. Briar at the top spot. Sammy in second. Robinson third, the big 44. That didn't last very long. Right when I said it, Robinson goes to the quick time. 44 bike, fastest on the racetrack. Brandon Robinson picked up his first ever Grand National victory here at the Daytona Flat Track in 2013. Last time we were on this racetrack was 2016. Briar out front, the one bike, second quick so far in qualifying. Briar back around, Sammy's in second on the racetrack. Sammy's quickest on the speed charts, though. Sammy goes to the top spot. 18.23. I'm sorry, 18.325. We're looking directly towards the zone. I'm trying to read the speed charts. Briar takes a look over his shoulders. The white flag is out for Briar Bauman. 
Last lap, Sammy at the top spot. 69 at the top spot. Sammy Halbert. Still has a quick time. Checkered flag is out this time from Big PR Flagman for the one. Look at Sammy way over the rear fender, the tail section coming off of turn number four. Trying to get that traction on the rear wheel. Sammy Halbert has the quick time here in qualifying. 18.325. 18.325. The last time we were here was 2016. We are going to bring out the trucks to wheel pack here real quick. Quick time right now is the 69 Sammy Halbert, 18.325. Breyer is second quick with a 18.329. 44, Brandon Robinson is third. Jared Meese is fourth. Davis Fisher is fifth. So that was it for round one of group number one for the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines. they are do a little bit track maintenance. We'll take a quick break and we come back. Group two. Super Twins qualifying right here at Daytona Flat Track. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one duel for the win down to the last lap. This is what I grew up watching. Riders talk over 130 mile per hour, mile race track, hands off the handlebars. I love it. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram has teamed up with Halifax Health Foundation on a suicide prevention and awareness initiative called Connect for Hope. The program targets the youth of our community as Volusia and Flagler counties are above the state of average suicide rate. Last year, owner Randy Dye and his son Daniel presented Halifax Health with a check for $15,000 toward the effort from the proceeds of the Golf for Kids Sake Golf Tournament. Additionally, Daniel has adopted the Race to Stop Suicide theme on his NASCAR Pro Late Model. A team effort in every way. It is everyone's hope assisted with the campaign to bring the stigma of mental health out to the shadows, protect the future of our youth in the process. I'll take it. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram is a proud partner of the American Flat Track season finale. Bring your season finale ticket stub to Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram and receive an additional $500 off your next new vehicle purchase. Offer ends October 31st, so hurry into Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. With over 300 world championship titles, Olin's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olin's products to elevate your performance, you get Olin's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, Welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the original lawyers that ride and the top motorcycle accident team in the country. These guys are tough, experienced, and they will have your back. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies alone. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS for free legal advice. Remember, if you go down, call Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. SBS is your single source for brake parts and components, from pads to rotors, shoes and other important parts, covering motorcycles, scooters, motocross bikes, ATVs and UTVs. We create the power to stop you so you can go ahead. Find the right parts for your bike at www.sbs.dk. Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas specializes in installing conventional built-up roofing as well as thermoplastic and EPDM single-ply roofing systems. A proud supporter of flat track racing, Roof Systems is sponsoring 10 riders and is the official commercial roofing company of American Flat Track. 
Up next, it is group two qualifying round number one for the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. 27, Robbie Pearson should lead him out. 62, Dan Bromley, who missed practice on the Roof Systems Indian. 44, Brian Smith. 79, Dalton Gautier. The five, Jersey Jake Johnson. 95, J.D. Beach. 12, Jay Maloney. And the 11, Andrew Luker. 17 riders in the AFT Super Twins class set to roll onto the track. Time to beat right now. 69, Sammy Halbert, 18.325. That is what they're shooting for as they roll onto the track. The 27 leads them out. Robbie Pearson, Rackley Racing. Country Saloon entry. There's Dan Bromley, Dalton Gautier, the four. Brian Smith trying to go at the back of the pack. This is qualifying. How they finish will set their uh, lineup for their semifinals. And how they finish in their semifinals will set the lineup for their main event, the Super Twin Flash. Here's from the 27th back there in 11th. The 5, Jake Johnson, currently in the 10th spot for the riders that are on the track. Pearson trying to run the bottom of the racetrack. There goes Dan Bromley up the racetrack, looking for his brake lever. Bromley having troubles on the 62 bike. Getting back in line, the 62. Folks, Pearson, the 27. Currently 10th. Now Jake Johnson, the five, moves up to fifth. The five is the fastest bike on the track. Jersey Jake Johnson. J.D. Beach slips wide down there, turns one, two. Let's Johnson go on through. Johnson right on the rear wheel of the four bike of Brian Smith. is out for Bugs Pearson. Robbie Pearson fourth right now, 18.440. The last lap, no, this next to last lap, Pearson moves up to fourth with a 18.440. So that's it for qualifying round number one of the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. Sammy Halbert has the quick time, 18.325. Briar Bauman second, 18.329. Brandon Robinson, third on the 44, 18.343. Fourth, Robbie Pearson on the 27 bike, 18.440. And fifth is the five of Jake Johnson. We're going to take five minutes. They're going to do a little track maintenance. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, up next will be AFT Production Twins qualifying round one. a minimum of six feet between you and other parties. We've added ground decals around the property to assist with this process. Thank you for your assistance. We welcome you for another great night of American flat track racing. Sideburn is the world's finest go-fast turn-left magazine. It is available to buy at AFT's trackside merchandise booths and is the official magazine of American flat track. For more information, visit sideburnmagazine.com. Stay Sick is the only bike for future rippers. Our bikes provide kids as young as three years old the opportunity to ride sooner. Learn more on our website, staysc.com. SuperGen Products is a premier supplier of Champion Power Equipment. Champion has years of experience providing dependable and durable power products designed and engineered in the U.S. For home, work, or play, Champion Products are the standard of performance excellence. Learn more at www.supergenproducts.com. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler to American Flat Track, providing three custom championship rings for each class in 2020. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at torcheyewear.com. 
and click on our free Home Try-On program. The Vance & Heinz brand has always been about enhancing the exhilaration of your motorcycle ride. It started over 40 years ago in California. Terry Vance always wanted to go faster, and Byron Heinz knew how to make it happen. Today, Vance & Heinz makes bikes go faster on the racetrack and makes great performance products for riders. See the full selection of Vance & Heinz exhaust, VO2 air intake system, and fuel pack FP3 products at a retailer near you. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Brought to you by Yamaha and its best-in-class lineup of power sports vehicles. For more information on how you too can experience the pinnacle of performance both on and off-road, visit YamahaMotorsports.com. Explore the full 2020 Indian motorcycle lineup, including the all-new Challenger, the ultimate American V-Twin bagger. For more info and to schedule a demo ride, visit IndianMotorcycle.com. Always wear a helmet, never drink and drive. Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas is a commercial and industrial roofing and sheet metal company based out of Dallas, Texas that proudly supports the American Flat Track Racing Series. For more information, go to roof-systems.net or give us a call at 469-730-2043. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. The ones who never stop. The ones who never quit. Round and around. We don't make the champions. But we do make the tires. We. Production Twins qualifying rolls onto the racetrack. 43, James Rispoli. 1, Corey Texter. 25, Ben Lau. 68, Ryan Varn. 64, Danny Eslick. And the 49, Chad Coase. This is qualifying round one for the AFT Production Twins. Production Twins are production-based motorcycles. No race motorcycles. Purpose-built race bikes are allowed. They have the black backgrounds with the white numerals in the Production Twins class. 12 entries today. They will all make it to their main event. They're uh, qualifying for their starting positions in their semifinals. James Rispoli out in front, our points leader, trying to wrap up his first ever AFT championship. He has a 38-point advantage over the one of Corey Texter. Corey Texter was quickest in practice. Actually, Pat Buchanan was. That's my fault. Pat Buchanan was quickest in practice. Texter goes to the top spot here in qualifying round number one. One 8.871 for the one bike. Corey Texter, the fastest one on the track. Barnes is second on the 68. Rispoli third on the 43 bike. Rispoli out in front, though. Rispoli on the Harley Davidson XG750, latest motors racing entry. Trying to run the very bottom of the racetrack. Rispoli won back here in 2009, his first ever AFT. Main event win at a Daytona flat track race. Ben Lau, second on the racetrack on the 25 bike. Keep your eyes on the 68. Barnes is up to second quick on the speed chart. White flag is out. The last lap qualifying group one. We go straight into group number two. Rispoli out in front. Ben Lau chasing him down. So is Varnes. Quickest bike on the track. The 68 of Varnes. Third on the racetrack. Checkered flag comes out. 
Ryan Barnes at the top spot. The 68 bike, quickest bike so far here in production. Twins, 18.785. Corey Texter is second, 18.839. Ben Lau, the 25 bike, is third, 19.015. They just told me where to keep on rolling. Up next, AFT Production Twins, group number two. 42, Jeremiah Duffy. 96, Cody Johncox. 50, Jimmy McAllister. 175, Pat Buchanan, who is fastest in practice. The 10 is Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. And the 123, Shelby Miller. Out here on a Kawasaki production twins. It's group number two. Look like Varn's bike lost power right there at the end. He just pushed it back into the pitter and hands it over to his dead Revan Kevin Varns. Used to be national number 89. Threw his hands up in the air. He's not too happy about it, but he's still at the top spot here in qualifying. Here comes group number two. Production twins. There's 175 around the outside. He wants to lead this one. Remember, he was fastest in practice. 175, Pat Buchanan. Jeremiah Duffy pulls out of the way. He wants to be at the back of the pack. And at the tail of the field, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. FT Twin flat tracker. Pat Buchanan trying to stay smooth, trying to stay out of the bumps. Coming up to turn number four. Trying to beat a 18.785. 12 entries here in production twins. They will all make the main. They're racing for their starting pick in the uh, starting spots, I should say, in the semifinals. John Cox gets a lot of traction coming off of turn number four. Pulls the front wheel, actually. John Cox up to seventh quick. Jeremiah Duffy jumps into seventh right when I say that. The 42 is seventh quick. The 175, Pat Buchanan back there in 10th. Johnny Lewis on the 10 bike moves into 5th. JL10 on the Royal Infield. Now 5th quick here in qualifying. On the rev limiter hard coming off the corners. There's a good look at the number 10 bike, JL10, Johnny Lewis. As they're setting a lot of rubber, especially down there at the far end of the racetrack. Don't see as much rubber down here on turns three and four. But down there, especially off a of turn or two and down the back straight, we have a lot of rubber going down. White flag is out. Pat Buchanan picking up that white flag, the 175 bike. Johnny Lewis up to second quick on the Royal Infield. Johnny Lewis now second quick here in qualifying. Checkered flag will be coming out for the 175. Pat Buchanan currently back there in the 10th position after being quickest in practice. 10th quick in qualifying. So Barnes has the top spot, 18.785. Johnny Lewis takes the Royal Infield up to second, 18.824. Corey Texter on the Yamaha is third, 18.839. Cody John Cox is fourth. 18.892. Fifth is Jeremiah Duffy, the 42 bike. For you folks that are here at Daytona, stop by the fan zone right by the main entrance. Stop by and get your event T-shirts. They're on sale down there. The Progressive American Flat Track season finale shirts. They have two different colors available. They've got some former race shirts available down there. And the Sideburn Magazine is down there. American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Also right down there is a rookie class of 79. Stop by and check them out. We'll take a quick break. About five minutes, we'll come back. Up next will be the AFT singles qualifying round number one right here at Daytona. Hey, race fans. Thank you again for your cooperation in helping our safe, successful return. We understand there may be some event activities during the event weekend that are not currently taking place. Some changes in our event schedule are necessary to ensure the safety of our fans, our employees, the riders, and their teams. All procedures for this weekend's events have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of all attending. Thank you for all your hard work as we continue to navigate these unprecedented times. Have fun and enjoy today's race. Hey everybody, it's Randy Dye with Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days are back again in October with bigger and better savings. Get 0% financing on a new Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, or Durango. 0% on a Chrysler Pacifica. How about a Jeep Renegade for $169 a month or a Wrangler for $299 a month and a Grand Cherokee for $269 a month? Get a brand new Ram for just $279 per month. So shop online with Easy Purchase or come visit us at Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. 
Jeep Beach is back and it's bigger and better than ever. 2021 is already shaping up to be an amazing year for the Jeep Beach Jamley Reunion. April 19th through 25th in Daytona Beach, Florida, the world's most famous beach, you'll find more vendors, more excitement, more trail rides, more fun, and of course, everything you've come to expect from Jeep Beach. Get your tickets right now at jeepbeach.com and we'll see you in Daytona April 19th through 25th. Arai Helmets started racing in America in flat track, and we've been supporting it ever since. Arai, handcrafted with an obsessive dedication to rider protection. For more information, please visit our website, ariamericas.com. You own the job and everything that comes with it. The mornings that start too early, the nights that go too late, and every unbelievable thing in between. It's good to know you can rent whatever construction equipment you need from people who do whatever it takes. Visit us at catrentalstore.com. Honda's all-new Talon 1000 X4, the official sports side-by-side -side of American flat track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. Cometa Gasket is the official gasket of American flat track. For decades, American flat track twins and singles champions have depended on Cometic to seal their engines. Cometic gaskets are the professional standard for racers who demand the very best. For more information, log on to Cometic.com. Cometic gasket, sealing championships since 1989. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! There's the old saying, you don't know how fast you can go until you fall down, and <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. I'm doing a sport that I love, and... We all know it can go bad, and when those times that it does go bad, you want to be safe. Just looking at the helmet, looking at the craftsmanship, you can tell why it's the best helmet out there. When I put the helmet on, I know that, that I have the best in the business on my head, and for me, I've been wearing Arai helmets my entire career, and, and I'm pretty proud of that. The darkness is full of demons. Hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows, prowling under the cloak of dusk. But we're not demons. We're beasts. AFT Singles presented by Russ Brown, motorcycle attorneys on the racetrack. This is qualifying around number one. Dallas Daniels on the 32, 18, Max Wells, 17, Henry Wiles, 13, Morgan Mishler, 15, Mikey Rush, 48, Trent Lowe, 105, Brandon Kitchen, 38, Tanner Dean, 211, Trevor Bruner, and the 54 of Michael Enderbitz, and those are the bikes on the racetrack. Racing against the clock. Battle for the top spot. Here comes Max Whale up the inside, the 18, taking over the lead on the racetrack. Now he has some clean racetrack. Maybe he can set the fast time. Quickest bike on the racetrack's the 48, that's Trent Lowe. That is one of the Parkinson Brothers racing Hondas, the PBR Hondas. Trent's a Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas rider. He's riding a Parkinson Brothers racing motorcycle. Still top spot, 48, Trent Lowe. Maxwell in second. Tanner Dean is third on the 38 bike now. Now Henry Wiles goes to the top spot. Dallas Daniels pulls off the racetrack in turn number two. Daniels having an issue on the 32 bike. Climbs off of the Yamaha. Pushing that bike. He'll take it back to the pit area. So the 32 did not fall off, but he's pushing his motorcycle back to the pits. Quick time so far. Henry Wiles, the 17 RMR American Honda. Second bike on the racetrack. Wiles was a 450 specialist. As the tracks are laying down a lot of rubber now, I can see it going into turn number one. There's a lot coming off the two and down the back straightaway. 
18 goes back to the head of the class. Max Whale from Australia, the Kawasaki to the top spot. Checkered flag is out. Max Whale. Fast qualifier so far, the 18 bike, 18.190. Henry Wiles is second, Trent Lowe is third. A few more bikes to take that checkered flag. Want to roll all the way through this class. Quick time, Max Whale from Kundu, Australia, 18.190. Wiles is second on the 17, Trent Lowe is third, Tanner Dean is fourth, and Brandon Kitchen is fifth. Up next, group number two, the 49, the California kid, Chad Coase. 52, Shane Texter. 51, Cole Zabala. 99, Kevin Stallings. 44, Cameron Smith. 99, James Ott. 169, Aiden Rusevens. 11, Andrew Luker. 96, Jesse Janish. The 14, Jacob Lehman as they roll onto the track. Max Whale has the fast time right now. That's what they are shooting for. The leader is in turn number four, the 49 of Chad Coase. Leading the, leading the way, fastest in this group, the 49 bike, 18.270. Chad Coase on the Wally Brown Racing American Suzuki. Shana Texter right there behind him on the 52 factory Red Bull KTM rider. Andrew Luker, the 11, moves up to fifth quick. One rider down in turn number three. Gets into the air fence, picks himself up. That looks like the 96 of Jesse Janish, double J. He's also okay, we keep on trucking. They pull the yellow flags back in. Janish reaches down to the left side of the motorcycle. Leader on the back straightaway, 49 in the top spot now. Chad Coase goes to the head of the class, 18.171. Last time by for Chad Coase has the top spot. White flag is out, one more lap to go. Kevin Stallings, the 99, currently six quick. The 99 bike is in the sixth spot. Shana Texter now seventh on the 52. Andrew Luker, the 11, moves into third. Derek Flag is out. He's got to be really smooth on the throttle on the slick track. Quick time here in qualifying one is Chad Coase, 18.171. Maxwell second, 18.190. Andrew Luker now third on the 11 bike, 18.234. Group three set to roll onto the racetrack. Qualifying round one, 151, Tyler Raggio, 31, Dylan Bell, 75, Blake Lomas, 133, David Wigan, 46, Shane Narbonne, 34, Brian McRoberts, 153, Aaron Kennedy, 161, Casey Sisko, and the 123, Shelby Miller. It's group number three, qualifying round one for the singles. Lomas out front, the 75 bike from South Carolina. He got out front of the practice session, but he had to make a few passes to get out front. Seventy-five of Lomas on the back straightaway, up to seventh quick for the seventy-five. One eight point two eight eight. Good battle back here for the second spot on the track. 151 of Raggio, the 31 of Bell. This group number three, first round of qualifying. 
Shelby Miller at the back of the pack to 123. And the white flag is out for the 75, Blake Lomas from South Carolina. There's Razia from Watford, California. The white flag will be coming out for the 123. And the checkered flag for the 75, Blake Lomas. So the checkered flag comes out, group number three, the AFT singles class. It is, oh. Chad Coe's quick time here in qualifying the singles class, 18.171. So they just told us they're gonna keep on going. Up next will be the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. This is their qualifying session. How they qualify out of here will get them into their main event. These ladies have built their motorcycles and maintained their motorcycles. They all started with the exact same budget. They all started with the Royal Enfield INT 650. And they're going to roll onto the racetrack right now. 88, Mallory Lee. 23, Trisha Dahl. 31, Jill DeShane. And the 13 of Melissa Paris, the road racer. Here they come onto the racetrack. Some of these girls race in the Hooligan Series. Some of them also get some other flat track experience. And, of course, the 13 is a road racer, Melissa Paris. This is qualifying for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. Again, they all start with the exact same budget. They could go out and race some sponsorship if they wanted to. The only thing they did to these motorcycles, they put the SNS exhausts on them. But they customize them to fit their comfort however they want. Different handlebars, different tail sections, it looks like. Uh, of course, different paint jobs. And throw the number plates on there, and they go racing. This is qualifying. 31, Jill Shane. She was the winner at the Atlanta Short Track the last time we had these girls with us. The 13 out front, Melissa Paris. Next year, they're going to extend the program to eight riders. There will be a female ambassador as part of this series. And we'll have them at a few more rounds next year at American Flat Track. And they're also going to venture into some road racing next year in the Build Train Race Program. For more information, look, at them, look them up on social media, Royal Infield, Royal Infield North America, and get a hold of Bree. Johnny Lewis does a lot with this group as well as he's riding the Royal Infield. These girls were riding at the Moto Anatomy School yesterday up in Center Hill, Florida, getting used to a shorter track. There's the 13 of Paris out in front, the 88. Mallory Lee, she's a fill-in rider. She's raced hooligans on single-cylinder motorcycles and on twins before. 23, Trisha Dahl is also a fill-in rider. She's from Minnesota. She has a lot of flat track experience. Leader right now, the 13, Melissa Paris, 20.679. So the 31 who won Atlanta back in second in qualifying. 88, Mallory Lee, third, quick, and the 23, Trisha Dahl. Checkered flag will come out this time by. For the 13, Melissa Paris. She will be on the pole. She'll have the first pick in the main event. That'll be the next time they come out will be their main. 88 right there, second. The 31 is third. GLD Shane, third on the racetrack. So that is it for qualifying for the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. Melissa Paris has the quick time, 20.541. Jill DeShane on the 31 is second. 88 Mallory Lee is third. And the 23, Trisha Dahl is fourth. So that is it for their qualifying. We're going to take a two-minute break. When we come back, final round of qualifying for all three AFT classes and then our main event for the Royal Enfield Train Race, Build Train Race Program. We'll be right back. For our event this weekend, we have taken enhanced health and safety measures for you, our other guests, and staff members. At our open merchandise and concession locations, contactless forms of payment are now accepted, and hand sanitizer, directional signage, social distancing signage, and on-site attendance will remain nearby to sanitize these areas throughout the event. Enjoy today's race. Motion Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Profil Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the Profil Air Chuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. 
or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach for the Pro Fill Air Chuck to manage your tires. Get yours at MotionPro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! Progressive American Flat Track season finale here at Daytona International Speedway just outside NASCAR turns one and two. The World Center of Racing up next. Final round of qualifying for the AFT Super Twins presented by Benson Heinz Glass. The quick time so far, fast time is the 69, 18.325. That's 69 Sammy Halbert. He is what everybody's gunning for right now. The one, Briar Bauman. Nine, Jared Meese. 69, Sammy Halbert. 37, Bronson Bauman. 44, Brandon Robinson. 92, Brandon Price. 23, Jeffrey Carver Jr. 67, Davis Fisher. And the 20 bike, Jared Vandekoy. This is qualifying round number two. We'll have three AFT classes, and then we'll get into our Royal Infield main event coming up after the last three uh, classes here for the AFTs. Coming out for qualifying, here they come. The time to beat. Here's the 69 of Sammy Halbert, 18.325. They roll on to the track. Championship still up for grabs. Between the one and the nine. Meese is at the very tail of the field. He doesn't want to go out there and mess with uh, the one of Briar Bauman at all. Briar leads down the back fairway, has quick time in this round, 18.089. Jared Meeks, 18.078, so the track is getting faster. Briar Bauman on the back straightaway, 69. Sammy Albert still quick in this round, 17.978, the quickest time of the day, the 69 slamming Sammy Halbert. He has one win so far in 2020. That was at the Springfield Mile. Can he win on the fastest track and the shortest track in the same season? It could happen. Now Briar Bauman goes to the top spot. The one bike, Briar Bauman, your quick time. Quick time, 17.866. Last time by, Briar gets even faster. Sammy Halbert second, 17.978. Jared Meese is third. Robinson fourth. Bronson Bauman is fifth. Last lap, group number one. Briar Bauman brings him to the checkered flag on the one Indian. Six night, Sammy Halbert gets way over that tail section. It's fun to watch him move all over that motorcycle. AFT Super Twins qualifying round number two. Up next, the next group will roll right back out here. The 27, Robbie Pearson will lead him out. 62, Dan Bromley. Four, Brian Smith. 79, Dalton Gautier. Five, Jake Johnson. 95, J.D. Beach. The 12 is Jay Maloney. 11, Andrew Luker. The time to beat Sammy, I'm sorry, Briar Bauman at that last uh, couple laps, 17.866. So our points leader has the quick time so far. In qualifying round two, it's definitely quicker than round number one. Those were the quickest laps we have seen so far here at Daytona Flat Track. Pearson will lead him out on the 27 bike. Bromley right behind him. Brian Smith gets out of the way. He wants to go to the back of the pack like he always does. 17 bikes making the call out here at the season finale. Jeffrey Carver flying through the pit area. I can see him trying to make it out here just in time. Here comes the 23 of Carver. 
No, that's the five of Jake Johnson. I'm sorry. Carver's in the first group. Jake Johnson just now made it to the racetrack. He comes out right behind the 11 of Andrew Luker. So just about misses the start. This one lap. Doug Pearson out front. Pearson takes him down the back straight with a 27 by currently 7th quick, 18.268. Now Jake Johnson on the 5 moves into 3rd, 17.986 for the 5 bike. Jake Johnson is 3rd right now. Overall. in the top spot here on the leading this one. He's in 11th, though, overall. Briar Bauman currently your overall quick time. Jake Johnson on the five, moves into second quick on that last lap by. So maybe he got his adrenaline flowing when he uh, got out to the track late. Jake Johnson, second quick, fastest on the racetrack is the five motorcycle. Checkered flag will come out this time by for the 27 of Bugs Pearson. There's the checkered flag. 62 of Bromley right behind him. The 27 is eight. And Brian Smith taking that checkered flag right there. So that is it for qualifying. Briar Bauman is your quick time. The number one rider, our points leader, 17.866. Jake Johnson, who was on the track in that last group, the five, 17.876. Sammy Halbert, third, the 69, 17.978. Jared Meese is fourth, and Brandon Robinson is fifth. We'll take a two-minute break. They're going to do a little bit of track maintenance, and we come back, AFT, Production Twins qualifying, round two, up next. Hey everybody, it's Randy Dye with Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days are back again in October with bigger and better savings. Get 0% financing on a new Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, or Durango. 0% on a Chrysler Pacifica. How about a Jeep Renegade for $169 a month or a Wrangler for $299 a month and a Grand Cherokee for $269 a month? Get a brand new Ram for just $279 per month. So shop online with Easy Purchase or come visit us at Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Check out the new VO2 air intakes from Vance and Hines. Billet Venturis help increase the flow of incoming air to boost performance. Industry-leading rechargeable filters help contribute to long-lasting performance. VO2 air intakes install in minutes, making it one of the easiest performance upgrades you can do to your ride. Start your championship season the same way we do at Vance and Hines. Take a deep breath. Inside every Yamaha lives the heart and soul of a competitor. The DNA of a champion. When you ride with us, it revs your heart and becomes a part of you too. AFT Production Twins coming up next, their second and final round of qualifying. The 43 will lead them out. That's your points leader, James the Rocket Rispoli. One, Corey Texter, 25, Ben Lau, 68, Ryan Barnes, 64, Danny Eslick, and the 49, Chad Coase. It looks like there's only four bikes ready to come to the track. We're scheduled to have six of them out there. Remember, Barnes pushed his motorcycle off the racetrack, so he's not coming out. Chad Coast, one of the riders doing double duty. Here comes another rider pulling up. I think he's in the next group, so we might send him out with just four bikes. Second round of qualifying, the time to beat, 18.789. That was Varnes in the first round of qualifying. He's not coming out, so he'll be saving his motorcycle for now. Here comes the 64 of Danny Eslick just now joining us at the tail of the field. 
four-time Daytona 200 winners at the back of the pack. One of the riders did some soil sampling earlier today. So the Rocket Rispoli out in front. point advantage in that super twins class. This class is a little bit more spread out. 38 points between first and second. Coast pulls up, gets out of the way right here. He's having an issue with the 49 bike. Let Eslick go on by. Fastest in this round is Corey Dexter, 18.261. Track is definitely getting faster. Rispoli second, 18.422. Corey Texter, quickest in this round, 18.261. Rispoli, second quick. Ben Lau, third so far. Check goes fourth. Danny Eslick is fifth in this round. The track is definitely getting faster every time they come on to the track. Putting more rubber down, easier to get traction. Easier to get the power to the ground and move forward when there's rubber on that racetrack. Rispoli out front, the 43 bike. There's the 43, Rispoli picking up that checkered flag. He's currently second quick. Ben Lau right there on the 25, currently third fast here in qualifying. Eslick on the 64, taking that checkered flag. In the 49, Chad Coase. So that group number, or group number one. Corey Texter, quickest overall, 18.261. He's got to come out here and win and hope that the 43 has a bad night to keep his championship points alive. 38 points, the difference between the 43 and the one bike. Up next, group number two, qualifying for the AFT Production Twins. 42, Jeremiah Duffy. 96, Cody Johncox. 50, Jimmy McAllister. 175, Pat Buchanan. 10, Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield. And the 123, Shelby Miller. He's on a Kawasaki. Quick time is a 18.271 as the final group rolls onto the racetrack. AFT Production Twins. Texter right now has the top spot. Ninety six leads the way on the Yamaha. Cody Giancox. Pat Buchanan right behind him on the Kawasaki. Johnny Lewis on the Royal Infield, the back of the pack. Battle for that lead right here, down here in three and four. There's a lot of rubber going down. Oh, Buchanan just about gets into the back tire of the 96 of John Cox. Love the different sounds of these twins on this Daytona flat track. First time ever. AFT Super Twins and AFT Production Twins have raced down here at the Daytona flat track. John Cox takes a look back, looking over the shoulder. He's got Pat Buchanan breathing down the back tire. Here they come into... Cox hit the top spot, the 96 bike. 175 right there. We'll lead him to that checkered flag. Pat Buchanan. I'm sorry, that's the white flag. One more lap to go. Buchanan out front. John Cox behind him. Buchanan currently in the sixth spot here in this second round. Johnny Lewis third in the second round of qualifying. And the checkered flag is out. So 
That is it for qualifying for the AFT production twins. Corey Texter, your quick time. He is your defending champ, 18.261. Raspoli second, 18.422. Johnny Lewis third, 18.512. We'll take a quick track prep break. When we come back, AFT singles, their final round of qualifying. After that, we'll have our three groups of those. Then we'll have our Royal Infield Build Train Race main event right here at Daytona Flat Track. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, final round of qualifying, AFT singles. The water. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! Tracks getting faster as more and more laps go down, more rubbers being put onto the racetrack. Still, throttle control, very important. How you can get on that throttle, how fast you can get on there, how low of air pressure can you run those back tires. Let them squat and let them get really good traction coming off those corners. We'll have to wait and see how it all develops out here. First time ever the Twins have been on Daytona Flat Track. So far, so good. It's been really fun to watch. Up next, we have the uh, AFT Singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Three groups, 29 riders will come out. They'll be qualifying for their semifinals, and then how they finish out of their semifinals will determine the fastest 16 into tonight's main event. AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. The bikes come to life. The 32 is Dallas Daniels, 18 Max Whale, 17 Henry Wiles, 13 Morgan Mishler, 15 Mikey Rush, 48 Trent Lowe, 105 Brandon Kitchen, 38 is the Dean Machine Tanner Dean, 211 Trevor Bruner, and the 54 is Michael Enderbitson. Group number one rolls on to the racetrack. The second round of qualifying, this is it. Take the fastest time from group one or group number two. The back of the pack, keep your eyes on that 48. Trent Lowe, Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas rider. He's on the Parkinson Brothers Racing Honda. Wiles was really good in qualifying round one. 17 bike. So was Henry Wiles on the 17. So was the 18 of Max Whale. Tanner Dean, quickest so far in this round, 18.306 for the 38 bike. Final round of qualifying. A leader into turn number three. Remember, Dallas Daniels had a mechanical issue in turn number two last round of qualifying. So these are his only qualifying laps that he'll get in. He's got his hands full. Here comes the 18 of Max Wales all over the back tire on that motorcycle coming off of turn number two. Max Wales trying to get by the 32. Trent Lowe, the fastest on the track, 17.871 for the 48 bike at the back of the pack. A 
last round of qualifying. Dallas Daniels continues to lead on the 32 bike. The fastest bike on the track goes the 48, who's at the back of the pack. Brent Kitchen currently second in the 105. There goes Max Whale after the checkered flag, trying to get on by. So after this round, in the second round of qualifying, Trent Lowe is fastest, 17.871 as the track continues to get faster. 105, Brandon Kitchen second, 17.977, the only two bikes in the 17-second range. Maxwell third, Tanner Dean fourth, Dallas Daniels is fifth. Up next, group number two, AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys, 49, Chad Coase, 52, Shayna Texter, 51, Cole Zabala, 99, Kevin Stallings, 44, Cameron Smith, 19, James Ott, 169, Aiden Rusev, and C11 is Andrew Luker, 96, Jesse Janish, and the 14, Jacob Lehman. Here they roll on to the track. The California Kid leads the way on the yellow Suzuki, the only Suzuki that runs with us. Fan texture on the KC1. The ball the 51 Honda. Green flag is waving, six laps to distance. The California Kid out front. Shane Texter right there in second, the winningest AT singles rider in history. It's a ball of the track. Stalling is looking for a way around on the 99. Hard to pass. Arrow Drew at the bottom of the track. Luker goes to the top spot. 17.806. The 11 bike is the quickest on the track. Keep your eyes on the 11. Yamaha at the back of the pack. He has the quick time. Right there he is. Chad Coast, the 49 Suzuki, is second quick now. Trent Lowe slides back to third using that last group. Down the back straightaway, the leader is the 49 bike. The fastest one on the track, though, is still the 11. 17.806 as the white flag comes out. One more lap for these riders. Group two. A lot lap. 49 will pick up the checkered flag. Chad Coase, he'll be second quick so far. Chad Coast, 17.857. Andrew Luker, the 11 bike, on the last lap, or the next to the last lap, lays on the fastest lap in the singles class, 17.654. The 49 of Chad Coast is second, the 48 Trent Lowe is third, Shayna Texter is fourth, Cole Zabala is fifth. Up next, final group, AFT Singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. 151, Tyler Raggio. 31, Dylan Bell. 75, Blake Lomas. 133, David Wigan. 46, Shane Narbonne. 34, Brian McRoberts. 153, Aaron Kennedy. 161, Casey Sisko. And the 123, that is Shelby Miller. The time to beat. Fast time right now is the 11 of Andrew Luker. 17.654. This is the last group rolling onto the track for the AFT Singles. Here they come on to the track. One fifty one of Raggio out in front. Just went pro a few rounds ago at the Devil's Bowl Speedways when he made his pro debut. Dylan Bell the thirty one up to seventeenth in this group. Dylan from Hoisington, Kansas. Riders from all around the state. And Maxwell from Australia. Leader takes him down the back straightaway. 151, Tyler Raggio. Currently 22nd quick in this round. Slips the groove down here in three and four.
151, Raggio has his hands full. Here comes the 31. Tyler Raggio has his hands full of the 31, trying to look for a way through. That's Dylan Bell. Here comes Blake Lomas on the 75, the South Carolina rider. Third on the track. Well, last lap qualifying. If he singles, checker flag will come out next time by for your leader, the 151, Tyler Raggio. That was the checkered flag. That is it for qualifying up. Next will be our first main event of the evening. It is the Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program for ladies who have built their motorcycles. We do have two fill-in riders, so they didn't build everything out here, but these ladies are going to come out here. There's four of them. They will extend this class to eight riders next year, and they're also going to go into some road racing next year in this Royal Enfield Build Train Race crew. So if you're a lady, if you want to work on your own motorcycle, if you want to race your own motorcycle, get a hold of Royal Enfield North America. Talk to Bree about it. 88, Mallory Lee will be out here. She's raced hooligans on singles and on twins. The 23, Trisha Dahl, she's from Minnesota, and she's... Plenty of flat track racing experience. 31, Jill D. Shane, Rogers, Minnesota. She runs in the District 23 up there in Minnesota. She was the winner at the Atlanta Short Track. And the 13, road racer out here, the 13, Melissa Paris from Oceanside, California. Remember, they started with the exact same budget. They're all INT 650 motorcycles. They had the exact same budget. They put SNS pipes on these motorcycles. They work on them. If they go out there and get their own sponsors, they can put a little bit more money into these bikes. They all had the exact same budget. But if they get some sponsorship, you can do that. So they're going to get one practice start. There'll be a siding lap, basically. And then they're going to line up, and they'll have their first main event, the Royal Enfield Main. Good chance to get a little practice start right there. You hear the rev limiter when they get them with that back tire spinning right here on this moon dirt, the Daytona flat track. So one lap to check it out. Stage them up, turn them loose. Main event number one, Royal Enfield Build Train Race Program. There's Melissa Paris, the uh, number 13 bike pulling up first. She used your pole setter. She used your quick time through qualifying. 31, Jill D. Shane, the Atlanta short track winner pulling up second. The 88 pulling up third, Mallory Lee. And the 23, Trisha Dahl pulling up there on the fourth spot. So... We've got them lined up. Here we go. 10-lap main event. Royal Enfield build train race program on the twins. First yellow is on. Second yellow is on. And the green light goes. Clutches are coming out. The 31 has trouble getting it into a gear, so she slides back to the third. It's Melissa Paris with the hole shot. The 13 leads them off of turn number two. She's a road racer. She takes them down the back straightaway, has her hands full off of turn number two. The 13 bike out in front. Main event number one, Melissa Paris leading the way. Jill DeShane right there in second. 10 lap main event for the Royal Enfields. The INT 650 motorcycles out here. Leader off of turn number two, down the back straightaway, stretching out just a little bit. The 13, Melissa Paris. A lot of motorcycle for these ladies to wrestle on this short track. Twin cylinder bikes. Looks like, oh, watch out. We got one going by the air fence. So there, turn number three. She lays it down. Looks like she's all right. We keep on racing until we see a red or a checkered. She's all right. She'll have to pick that motorcycle up. You have one rider down. She's all right. She got it back up. She'll try to continue on. Here comes your leader, the 13 bike, coming this way. Melissa Paris continues to lead. Second place is the 31, Jill DeShane. Remember, Jill won at the Atlanta Short Track. She's trying to play some catch up. Here comes your leader. The 13 makes her way through three, now into four. Melissa Paris out in front. Man, she, this young lady that stopped over here in turn number four gets up and keeps on going. That's the 23 bike. She's not going to stop. That's Trisha Dahl. She keeps on going. She's maybe down a few laps. The 13, Melissa Paris, your leader down here in turn number four. 31 in second, Jill DeShane.
halfway. Flags are in the air. When they cross the flags like that, we're halfway through. We'll see that in the AFT classes as well. Big PR flagman will cross the white and the green. Battle's heating up for the top spot. Here comes the 31, making a charge towards the front. Your leader of the 13, Melissa Paris. Jill Shane in second. Mallory Lee in third. Fourth, the young lady that went off the track and fell down, the 23, Trisha Dahl. She's still in the D4 spot. Here's your leader, the 13, getting ready to have her hands full with the 31. 31 with a commanding victory at the Atlanta Short Track. This track totally different. The leader gets sideways down here. Turn number two, she grabs a handful of throttle. Bringing it back this way. They're getting into some lap traffic now. Can they get through there? No harm, no foul. We'll see. The 13 right on the back tire. Going up the inside, taking over. Getting by that rider, no problem. So still the 13 continues to lead. Seven laps in the book. Now eight laps, I'm sorry, in the books. Big PR flagman has that white flag ready to pull out next time by. The 31 running out of time. Can she make the pass? It's Melissa Paris out in front. White flag is out. 13, 31. Third right now is the 88. And fourth is the 23. Last lap, the 31 putting on a charge. Can she do it? Last lap, last corner. The leader from Oceanside, California, trying to bring him off one more corner. Here she comes. Double checker flags out. The winner's Melissa Paris. Second, Jill DeShane. Here's your rider that fell off. She still finishes up right here in the fourth position. That's the 23, Trisha Dahl. And here comes third place, 88, Mallory Lee, ranking her way across the uh, finish line right here to that double checkered flag. We'll take these top four finishers. I believe they're all going to go to the infield sections for a uh, podium interview. We get to talk to the man himself. Ricky Rackman is down there. We haven't even talked to him yet today. Ricky's on part of his Ricky's Ride. He raises money to help out charities, several different charities throughout the year. Ricky Rackman, Ricky, can you hear me down there? Let me, let me, let me bring him in here before we talk to these top four riders. Ricky, can you hear me? I don't think he can hear me just yet. He's ready to talk to these top four riders. We'll get them all lined up again. Your winner is the 13, Melissa Paris. Second, Jill DeShane. Third, 88, Mallory Lee. And fourth was the 23 of Trisha Dahl. So we'll take these top three up there. Looks like all four of them are there. The folks from Royal Enfield are here. They build these bikes over in India. We'll talk to these top four riders. Just a second, Ricky Rackman will talk to them. Make sure these ladies take their helmets off. I get the bikes up there in those wheel chalks. I love it. Melissa goes over there, slides the rear wheel over for the uh, rider that finished up third. Uh, so we'll talk to third first. Second and your winner, I believe Ricky Rackman is down there. Again, third place was the 88 bike. Ricky Rackman just about ready. All right, let's send it to Ricky Rackman down there on the victory podium. Hello, Scotty. How are you? And hello to everybody at the Daytona Flat Track. Wow. I, I will tell you, first of all, we've got the winner, Melissa Paris from Oceanside, California. And hey, let's give it up for all four of these ladies in the Build, Train, and Race program. It was an, we're going to start with the winner. It was quite a different from the last time I saw you on the track. And this track was quite different too, wasn't it? Yeah, I think this track definitely is a little bit more my speed. I thought road racing, I'd like that big old blue groove, but it turns out it's way more fun to be out of control and a little bit sideways. Finishing second tonight, we've got Jill DeShane, who the last time I believe was in Atlanta where we were with you, and, and Jillian just took the whole race. There was no competition, but you had competition. Tonight was definitely tougher. Definitely. This is definitely a track I've never ridden before. Um, we only have groove tracks in Minnesota, so it was super awesome experience. Very challenging, um, but lots of fun. And this weather is much like it is in Minnesota, right? It's, I think, 39 and snowing in Minnesota right now. See, be grateful out there, okay? Finishing third, we've got Mallory Lee from Austin, Texas, who filled in, what was it? And I think she's got some friends out there as well. What was it like getting out there on the track? Because I know I've been watching all the other class today, and this track is tough today. Uh, that was awesome. I came out here to have a good time, and I think I accomplished that. That was the most fun, so I'm stoked. And this is part of the Build, Train, and Race program. In fourth, we have got Trisha Dahl, 
who is also filling in. All part of this, you got to remember, these girls, they got these Royal Enfields, they built them, they were able to go out and get sponsors, and then they were taught by Johnny Lewis a lot of, you know, tricks about flat track racing, and you kind of filled in. I, I know you got the wall in the wall, but you got back up and still were able to race. Yeah, my bike popped into neutral, and I didn't have any engine braking, but we got back up and finished it. Let's give it up for all four ladies, part of the Build Train Race Program with Royal Enfield. Again, check out Royal Enfield on their website. They're making some incredible motorcycles. That's Ricky Rackman down there in the infield. Congratulations to our, our winner down there, the 13, Melissa Parrish. Second was the 31, Jill Shane. Third was the 88 of Mallory Lee. So we're going to take a break. It is a scheduled intermission break. They're going to do some track maintenance. We'll come back at 6.30 Eastern time with opening ceremonies right here at Daytona Flat Track. Let's get ready for our main event in American Flat Track. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one duel for the win down to the last lap. This is what I grew up watching. Riders talk over 130 mile per hour, mile racetrack, hands off the handlebars. I love it. Hey everybody, it's Randy Dye with Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days are back again in October with bigger and better savings. Get 0% financing on a new Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, or Durango. 0% on a Chrysler Pacifica. How about a Jeep Renegade for $169 a month or a Wrangler for $299 a month and a Grand Cherokee for $269 a month? Get a brand new Ram for just $279 per month. So shop online with Easy Purchase or come visit us at Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Hi, I'm Daniel Dye, driver of the Race's Top Suicide, number 43, and the Arkham Menards E-Series. Did you know that 132 people die every day to suicide, and 22 of those are veterans? 90% of those people had diagnosable mental illnesses. Let's face it, suicide touches us all. If someone you know or love needs help, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. That's 800-273-TALK. Together, we can race to stop suicide. Jeep Beach is back and it's bigger and better than ever. 2021 is already shaping up to be an amazing year for the Jeep Beach Jamley Reunion. April 19th through 25th in Daytona Beach, Florida, the world's most famous beach, you'll find more vendors, more excitement, more trail rides, more fun, and of course, everything you've come to expect from Jeep Beach. Get your tickets right now at jeepbeach.com and we'll see you in Daytona April 19th through 25th. American Flat Track is so unique because of how close the racing is. Bar to bar, we have no front brakes, we're just drifting on dirt. Elbow to elbow at 130 mile an hour just doesn't get any better. The thrill of the speed definitely separates American Flat Track from the rest. It's like one of the best shows in the world. You can't get anything better than that. You can come and watch and see the whole track and see the whole race and the bikes that we race, I mean, you can buy those as street trackers. So, like, it's really cool to have that type of sport that the fans can do it, too. All the riders, most likely in any other sport, don't really hang out or train together. But we actually hang out and we're good friends. So it's fun to be in the sport and deal with the people we do. Flat track, it's like kind of a big family. We all know each other. We all know each other's business. You see a lot of us riders training together on the off season, helping each other out, working together. Something you don't really see in, in other motorcycle sports. Everyone is willing to help each other make it to the track to keep the sport alive. And that's what really makes the family aspect come together because we want to see each other succeed, but we also want to see the sport grow. Mobile View has been providing state-of-the-art LED video screens to sporting and special events throughout the U.S. and Canada since 1999. We use our vast experience of thousands of events to help guide the process of finding the right size screen to help make your event a memorable experience for your fans and sponsors. Royal Enfield made its first motorcycle in 1901. In 2020, Royal Enfield takes its first steps into the fastest globally growing motorsport, flat track racing. This partnership is just the beginning. For more information, visit royalenfield.com. 
Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the original lawyers that ride and the top motorcycle accident team in the country. These guys are tough, experienced, and they will have your back. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies alone. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS for free legal advice. Remember, if you go down, call Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers is proud to be the official jeweler to American Flat Track, providing three custom championship rings for each class in 2020. TDFJ wants to be your jeweler. Check us out online for all your jewelry needs from engagement rings to fashion jewelry to watches in all price points to fit everyone's budget. Shop like a pro. Shop TDFJ.com. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at torcheyewear.com and click on our free home try-on program. Absolute domination from Corey Texter, and yes, that was his sister, Shayna, that won our singles class. This is the first time ever siblings have won two different main events on the same night in American Flat Track. Winning Texas was cool. At the end of my race, I immediately shifted my focus to Shayna and was rooting for her, and it didn't settle in until the drive ride home. I was like, man, we both won on the same day, so that was really cool. For Corey to go out and, and win the race, you know, it's, he's had a lot of struggles over the last couple years, so, you know, that was super cool. And then for me to back it up, you know, it was just, you know, a, a fairy tale ending for our family, and, um, you know, it's something that's gonna go down in the record books for sure. My all-time favorite racing memory isn't even of myself, it's of Shayna when she won Knoxville. She was the first female to win a race, and all the effort we put into it after my dad passed away, um, the emotion I had when she won Knoxville is unlike any other I've had for my own success, me winning races. For her to win Knoxville was, uh, it's my favorite racing memory as a family. Family for us is everything. You know, it was super helpful to have him in my corner growing up, and you know, my dad kind of learned how to build bikes. For him, it, that suited me then later in life, so. It's nice having somebody to bounce information off of, somebody to test with, train with. We're not on the same team technically, but we're blood, so we're, we're the same team, and it's nice to have that. It's cool to, to be able to have our family be our biggest cheerleaders, but also our biggest critics, especially our mom. You know, she's gonna be the first one to tell us if we're out of line and, uh, you know, keep us humble, keep us in line, and, uh, and, and also give us a, a great role model to look up to. Yeah, my mom keeps us level-headed, you know, she wants us to do well and succeed. Uh, growing up, she taught us a lot, but she also l let us learn and be dependent and learn things on our own so we could be our own uh, individuals growing up, but she's our, our biggest supporter and she doesn't know a lot about racing, she knows enough, but it's cool to talk about other things other than racing. You know, our mom brings a lot of that aspect to our lives and, you know, with, without her, I don't know where we'd be right now. She's done a lot for us over the years. The Vance & Hines brand has always been about enhancing the exhilaration of your motorcycle ride. It started over 40 years ago in California. Terry Vance always wanted to go faster, and Byron Hines knew how to make it happen. Today, Vance & Hines makes bikes go faster on the racetrack and makes great performance products for riders. See the full selection of Vance & Hines exhaust, VO2 air intake system, and fuel pack FP3 products at a retailer near you. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. Wheeland designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for various industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. From the maker of your favorite IPAs comes a voodoo ranger unlike any you've seen before. And it tastes like freedom.
Check out the new VO2 air intakes from Vance and Hines. Billet Venturis help increase the flow of incoming air to boost performance. Industry-leading rechargeable filters help contribute to long-lasting performance. VO2 air intakes install in minutes, making it one of the easiest performance upgrades you can do to your ride. Start your championship season the same way we do at Vance and Hines. Take a deep breath. The darkness is full of demons. Hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows, prowling under the cloak of dusk. But we're not demons. We're beasts. is the water. ODI, the world leader in grip technology. Dedicated to providing the best grip for your type of racing, including flat track and V-twin, ODI developed a patented lock-on grip system, delivering easy installation and 100% slip-free performance guaranteed. ODI, visit us at odigrips.com. With over 300 world championship titles, Olin's advanced suspension technology has been providing the pinnacle of suspension for all areas of motorsports, for road or track, dirt or asphalt. When you choose Olin's products to elevate your performance, you get Olin's USA support and service to keep fueling your passion for excellence. Have you checked your tire pressure recently? Setting tire pressure is easy with a ProFill Air Chuck by Motion Pro. This unique tool allows you to reach even the most difficult to access valve stems. Great for all motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs, and works great on your car, truck, and RV too. Find the ProFill Air Chuck and more at MotionPro.com. Royal Enfield made its first motorcycle in 1901. In 2020, Royal Enfield takes its first steps into the fastest globally growing motorsport, flat track racing. This partnership is just the beginning. For more information, visit RoyalEnfield.com. Parts Unlimited, the people behind We Support the Sport, welcome you to this high action event. We are proud to join with race fans everywhere in working to ensure that our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season. And you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Kicker Performance Audio is the official sound system of American Flat Track. Kicker's fully stocked line of products includes speakers, amplifiers, and subwoofers for your car and truck stereo systems, as well as those for your boat, side-by-side, -side, and touring motorcycle. Kicker also makes Bluetooth outdoor speakers, over-ear headphones, and earbuds to pair with your favorite mobile device. To learn more or find a dealer, visit kicker.com. Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas specializes in installing conventional built-up roofing, as well as thermoplastic and EPDM single-ply roofing systems. A proud supporter of flat track racing, Roof Systems is sponsoring 10 riders and is the official commercial roofing company of American Flat Track.
The rookies of 79 are former racers and champions of the sport who reunited in 2009 to form the official charity for American Flat Track. Ten years and over $1.7 million raised for our injured racers. Visit rookies79.com to see how you can help. From the maker of your favorite IPAs comes a voodoo ranger unlike any you've seen before. And it tastes like freedom. Supergen Products is a premier supplier of Champion Power Equipment. Champion has years of experience providing dependable and durable power products designed and engineered in the U.S. For home, work, or play, Champion Products are the standard of performance excellence. Learn more at www.supergenproducts.com. You don't take greatness for granted, and neither should your gear. We are Torch Eyewear, and we design sunglasses for protection, performance, and chasing your passion. For more information, visit our website at torcheyewear.com and click on our free home try-on program. The Vance & Heinz brand has always been about enhancing the exhilaration of your motorcycle ride. It started over 40 years ago in California. Terry Vance always wanted to go faster, and Byron Heinz knew how to make it happen. Today, Vance & Heinz makes bikes go faster on the racetrack and makes great performance products for riders. See the full selection of Vance & Heinz exhaust, VO2 air intake system, and fuel pack FP3 products at a retailer near you. Race fans, VP Racing Fuels offers a full line of power sports fuels, lubricants, coolants, and appearance products for track and street. From pro racers to weekend warriors, we help riders make more power. Ask your local power sports dealer. There's the old saying, you don't know how fast you can go until you fall down, and <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. I'm doing a sport that I love, and we all know it can go bad. And when those times that it does go bad, you want to be safe. Just looking at the helmet, looking at the craftsmanship, you can tell why it's the best helmet out there. When I put the helmet on, I know that, that I have the best in the business on my head, and for me, I've been wearing a Rye helmet my entire career, and, and I'm pretty proud of that. You own the job. The mornings that start too early. The nights that go too late. And every unexpected, unpredictable, unthinkable, unbelievable thing in between. You own it all. It's good to know you can rent whatever you need from people to do whatever it takes. Let's do the work. The ones who never stop. The ones who never quit. Around and around. We don't make the champions, but we do make the tires. We, we, we are dumb up, are dumb, are dumb up. Check out the new VO2 air intakes from Vance & Hines. Billet Venturis help increase the flow of incoming air to boost performance. Industry-leading rechargeable filters help contribute to long-lasting performance. VO2 air intakes install in minutes, making it one of the easiest performance upgrades you can do to your ride. Start your championship season the same way we do at Vance & Hines. Take a deep breath. The darkness is full of demons. Hazy creatures who lurk in the shadows, prowling under the cloak of dusk. But we're not demons. We're beasts.
premier motorcycle international event. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It draws the who's who of cycling and the finest riders on two wheels competing, followed by thousands of loyal fans. We tear our insides out to win. You can't think, you can't remember what you do or say. There is no thinking. Our hearts beat, but our minds are dead. It's not easy to lean in the turns at over 100 miles an hour. Legalized insanity. 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 He's gonna score. What did all add up to? In the most thrilling spectator sport in America. It adds up to life itself. It adds up to the pain of losing and the thrill of winning. To race is to live. And welcome to Daytona. It's progressive American flat track. The season finale here at Daytona flat track just outside NASCAR turns one and two at Daytona International Speedway, the world center of racing. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American flat track here in just a moment. We're going to that victory podium to talk to Ricky Rackman. But first, let's bring up our 2020 AFT singles champion doing it for SNC Racing Monster Energy Yamaha. It's Dallas Daniels. Eight wins, six in a row here in 2020. Make some noise for your new champion. Joining me right, here we go. Well, let me make sure that you are, can hear me. You guys can hear me, right? That was pathetic, we'll work on that. Joining me right now, we have got the AFT singles champion, Dallas Daniels, 17 years old, an amazing season. Did this season surprise you at all? Oh uh, yeah, it definitely surprised me, and I think it surprised our whole team for sure. Where we started this year, we didn't make the first main event, so uh, it's been a long road coming this year. But uh, we've pretty much had a dream season from then on. Eight wins, six in a row, and looking to keep it going tonight. When you're walking through the paddock, are people calling you champ? <laughs> yeah, the, the, some people, you know, but I, I'm just any other guy. I've just I got a number one, you know. But uh, I mean, that means a lot in this sport, but it doesn't make me any better of a person. It just means I did something better than these guys. But I, you know. All these guys are fast, for sure. Well, tw already the champion, 17, so you can't move up to another class next year. What are your plans for 2021? Uh, 2021, I'm gonna race full-time in the singles class, just like I did this year with Essence and Racing, and halfway through the year when I turn 18, I'm gonna ride a production twin for them also, and the years after that, we're still trying to figure out what we're gonna do, but that's the plan for next year. Let's give it up for your AFT singles champion, Dallas Daniels. Up next, your AFT Production Twins Championship contenders. In the lead is the 43, James the Rocker Rispoli. Seven wins and 11 podiums. His competition, the big number one, our reigning champion. Three wins, 11 top fives in 2020. Make some noise for your defending champ, the one of Corey Texter. The number one play right now. This guy's got one. This guy wants one. Look at it, James. Look at it. Yeah, not yet. Okay, Corey Texter, you know it's going to be tough, and it's tough out there tonight. Yeah, you know, anything can happen on a short track. I know that very well growing up in Pennsylvania and racing a lot of indoors. And, uh, yeah, anything can happen, but uh, we've done our job so far. We've uh, had some good times in qualifying and try and finish this season strong. The points gap's pretty big, but, hell, anything can happen. We're going to keep digging and wish James best of luck, and it should be a really good night. And you've got that one plate already. You don't want to give it up, do you? No, nah, I worked my whole life to get that thing. So, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep digging and uh, try and keep it on our bikes for next year. But we got a, um, a long night ahead of us to make that happen, and uh, we'll just have to see what, what happens. You know, we'll keep digging. Let's give it up for your reigning champion, Corey Texter. And over here, the rider of the number 43, Harley Davidson, James Raspoli. Let's talk about this season because I'm happy to say that I was up there for all of your wins. And you started the season with just second, second, and then just kept on winning and winning and winning. And now you're going for the championship. Perhaps could clinch it tonight. What is it going to take for you to get a championship tonight? Yeah, no, we just got to keep attacking like we've been doing, you know. Like you kind of get into a championship mode and you start riding defensive, and that's something we don't want to do, you know. Like Dallas did it really good. He, you know, won his race and won the championship. I'd like to do the same. So we're going to keep attacking, but obviously we got it in the back head that if Corey's winning, we need to just finish in the top seven, and then maybe tomorrow we come out and can, you know, let it all hang out. So the, 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 the focus is let's get this thing clinched up. You know, let's do it for Harley. Let's do it for latest motors racing. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a good show tonight. 
They definitely did a lot of track work out there, so I think, you know, it's going to get a little dicey, and I think there's a few players that really want a little shot at the title, so we'll see what happens. Both of these guys are going for this, the number one plate. Give it up for Corey Texter and James Rispoli. And last but not least, your AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Heinz Class. It's coming down to the wire. There's nine points between the two riders. Your defending champion, six wins in 2020, 12 podiums, the number one, Briar Bauman. And his competition, five-time Grand National Champion, five wins this season, 10 podiums. It's the number nine, the jammer, Jared Mees. This guy's had the number one plate. This guy currently has the number one plate. Let's start with Jared Meese. I know it's a tough track for it to all come down to this, but you want to get that one plate again, of course. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, it's what everybody works so hard for. And, you know, when you lose it, it definitely makes you hungry again to, to come back the next year. So definitely got my sights set on it. And um, it's a big weekend for us, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. What do you think about this track? Because for a lot of us watching, it seems like it would be unpredictable what could happen tonight. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, for what the Twins were riding on and stuff, this uh, wouldn't be where my pick of choice would be. But um, hey, you know, we're here, and uh, it's, I'm just thankful to be able to get the uh, 16 rounds in, or actually 15 because of the rain out last week. So um, during the, you know, the whole pandemic and everything, we kind of kind of got what we could get. And um, I'm just, like I said, thankful to be in this position and uh, looking forward for the weekend. And more than anything, I just want to leave it all out here. We are going to have a tight points battle for tonight and tomorrow night. And currently with the number one plate, we have got Briar Bauman. I noticed, uh, I think you went down in one of the practices. It's tough out there, right? Yeah, this track is so tricky. I mean, just a little bit of water on top of it. When it gets hard like that, it just turns to, turns to ice, really. So. Got a little bit hot, crashed. I kind of laid there for a second, kind of got my bearings back, and I looked over, and Sammy Hopper was down too. Um, a couple laps later, Jeffy Carver went down. So all great guys kind of struggling uh, just to, just to kind of keep their bearings. So difficult racetrack, to say the least. It seems like when you're relaxed is when you usually win. It's got to be hard to relax out in a track like this. Dude, I'm, honestly, I'm a, I'm a, you can ask Shane, I'm a ball of stress right now. It's, uh, it's tough, to be honest. Um, never been in this position for, before, but we're just taking it how we can and uh, trying to do our job. It's, uh, like I said, it's new to me. Um, I like these racetracks. It's a little bit, if I had to pick a racetrack, I would come here. Um, but I've, uh, I've won here before and then also taken 15th the following night. So just, uh, just happy, like Jared said, to get 16 rounds in. There was a long time during the, during the, the break after the first TT that we didn't even know if we were going to race. So to get this many rounds in is a, is a bonus. We have got an incredible points battle. Could it finish tonight? Well, I don't know. We've got Jared Meese and Briar Bauman. Give it up. All right, congratulations to those two. Don't forget Ricky Rackman. They are racing for those championship rings as well. So uh, they are beautiful from TDFJ. Tom Duma Fine Jewelers. Ricky got to wear them earlier in the year. There's a look at them on the big screen. They took them away from Ricky because he tried taking them home. One of a kind for each ring. Ricky, you've already worn those things. How cool are they? I will tell you, as they say, it don't mean a thing unless you got that bling. The rings are incredible. I don't know why they don't let me wear them. Last time that they let me wear one of the rings, they honestly, it got stuck, and I was kind of digging it because they're such incredible rings. And the detail, you know, it's got the number one plate on it, which is, of course, every rider hat wants to get. And if you turn it over, it's got the same tread as the Dunlop tires. Scotty, these rings are incredible, so incredible that they don't even let me wear them tonight. But uh, Dallas is going to get one. Who's going to get one in production twins? Who's going to get one in super twins? I don't know. And that's why we race. We might crown a second champion tonight. It's really in the production twins. It's a pretty big gap between the top two riders in that AFT. Super twins class, it's a lot closer. That will probably be crowned tomorrow night. Let's go back down trackside to that victory podium. Here's Ricky Rackman for tonight's invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, all my good friends here at the Daytona Flat Track, please rise and remove your hats for the invocation from Raymond Rizzo. Thank you, Ricky. Let's all pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to gather. God, we're at this incredible facility and we're so grateful for that. We thank you for your presence, your love, your grace, your mercy, seen and unseen, and ask that you wrap your arms of love around each and every one. We're thankful for the riders, or pray a blessing upon each and every one to stay safe from all harm, to navigate this track at their best ability, their crew, 
their sponsors, their families. I pray that you would continue to draw them closer together and give them a great experience. I pray also for those that are working behind the scenes. Thankful for all of our uh, medical staff, all our security, those that are working in the concessions and so on. I pray that you'd bless and encourage them. We're thankful for their service. I'm also thankful for AFT, all our leadership and all the staff. Bless them, encourage them, strengthen them. And I also thankful for all the fans. God, we got an incredible fans from around the world and we're just so thankful for them. I pray that you'd bless them with a great show and let them know that they are loved and we're so grateful. And we all said, amen and amen. Please remain standing for your national anthem. Hey friends, can I have a word with you? But before we get started, I want to personally thank each and every one of you that is watching online and especially all you people that showed up here at Daytona. It is Biketoberfest. I rode here. I know that there's a lot of bikers here and it was so beautiful to go on 95 and see so many of those beautiful motorcycles on trailers, but I know that some of you did ride, and I appreciate you being here. We are gonna have such a good time. It all comes down to tonight and tomorrow night, and just let me get a mic check right now. Let me know that you're with me. Are you with me, Daytona? Of course I heard you, but I wanna do it one more time. We are not in our houses. We are not quarantined. We are at Daytona International Speedway. We are getting ready for some American flat track racing. So all the people all over the world watching us online, watching us on track pass, I wanna hear Daytona one more time for Biketoberfest. Can you hear me? I love it. I am so ready for racing tonight. Back to you, Scotty. Well, that's the Reverend Ricky Rackman. He is fired up tonight. He's ready for some racing. We got a lot going on. Up first will be the AFT Production Twin Semifinals. There'll be two of them, eight laps apiece. Top eight to the main event. After that, AFT Single Semifinals, eight laps each. The top eight to the main. And then the AFT Super Twins Semifinals. All the riders will transfer to the main. It is eight laps. After that, three main events. That is Ricky Rackman down there on the track side. I'm Scotty Dubler. Now let's bring in your 23. Three twins, Grand National Champion, my good friend, the Bullet, Brad Baker. Brad, welcome to back to Daytona. Thanks a lot, Scotty. It's awesome to be back here at the short track outside Turn One here uh, of the big speedway in Daytona. This this racetrack uh, got a lot of history at, and been a lot of great racing here over the. I think this is the seventh year we've been uh, coming here, not consecutively, but seventh year that we came here, and definitely been a lot of great racing. Usually, always starting the season here, and now we're end of the season in Daytona a little bit different for all of us but uh, it's still cool to be back at Daytona and it should make for a very interesting grand finale to the uh, 2020 season. Well, looking way back you actually won your first ever AFT national race here in 2009. Do you remember that? Uh, I do remember that. I mean uh, it wasn't at this specific track itself. It was over in uh, Municipal Stadium when we were there but it's still the Daytona short track uh, and I, yeah I did win my first ever Grand National as a pro single rider uh, when I was 16 back in 09. Uh, pretty crazy to say that. And then came here the, in 2010. That was the first time that we had raced here at this racetrack. Uh, and I came here the number one plate as a singles rider. And I think I ended up with like a fourth and a third or a fourth and a second, whatever it was. But uh, had quite a bit of a success here and 
I always enjoyed riding at this racetrack. So we talked to Ricky just a few moments ago, and Ricky on the off week before the Charlotte Half Mile actually went to the slide school. Johnny Lewis coming up in our next race, but he went, Ricky went and did a school with Johnny Lewis. Let's check it out. So I'm the rookie with the American Flat Track team. And even though I've been watching flat track for many years, I've never ridden a motorcycle on the dirt, ever, until today. I'm at Moto Anatomy. This is a school that's run by Johnny Lewis. And basically, he teaches people like me that have never been on the dirt to ride flat track style, slide school. I got my body rotated. My knee is driving into the tank. Because as we go into the corner, it's basically me leaning to the right and pushing the bike down, and that allows the bike to go into the corner a lot easier. You're not really using your hand to turn the motorcycle. All we're actually doing is actually add pressure one way or the other. So one of the things that's the biggest mistake that I'm making is how to put the leg out. If you've ridden motocross, you know, put it out in front. But I'm watching Johnny Lewis right there, and what you do is you have to take your leg out and really like adjust it like that, arm straight. I'm really good at doing it off the motorcycle, getting it on the motorcycle, it's a different story. But watching Johnny Lewis do it is, is pretty amazing. It gives you such an appreciation for the guys and girls that you see out doing it on the track. We don't go into the corner and then go, oh, I gotta get this leg out even more. We have to get the stretch out first to then allow the bike to come through. I know it doesn't look like it, but I feel like I'm getting the hang of it. They're telling me exactly what I need to do and I can feel it. But now, I know this doesn't make sense, but they all say to go faster, you gotta go slower to go faster. So now we're gonna add a little bit of back brake, which, uh, which you'd think would feel the safer way to go around, but that also adds a little bit of slide, which uh, I'm a little sketchy about. I'm telling you though, I'm having so much fun, but now we'll see what happens when we add a little rear brake to it. So you could get in there, hold the brake. When you would normally pick the throttle off, you can just then start to pick it up and then slowly let off the rear brake. That'll just keep the bike loaded all the way through. And then it feels like if the bike's running wide a little bit, you can just use a little more brake, tighten the corner up, and then accelerate off. I'm using muscles that I've never used before, which would be every muscle, but you're really supposed to put the leg out like that, and I'm starting to feel it in the hip muscles a little bit, and it gives you so much more appreciation for what these guys and girls are doing out on the track, but of course, they're doing it at about 130, and I'm doing it at about 10. Well, that wraps up my first Day ever on the dirt at Moto Anatomy. I need to thank Bree and Royal Enfield and of course Johnny Lewis with Moto Anatomy. The only problem is that it was so much fun that I really, really want to do it again. And if you want to do it, just check out MotoAnatomy.com or Royal Enfield's website it has a link. I'm going to go out one more time. And that was Ricky Rackman checking out the slide school. Now let's go to the fourth member of our crew. You've seen her on NBC Sports. She's on the back straightaway right now. It is Kristen Beat with a track report. Kristen, how's it going down there? Having some technical difficulties. I see you, Kristen. She's out there. We'll get a track report from her in a little bit. The Honda Talon's making its way onto the racetrack. The first event's coming up at 6.50, so we're just a couple of moments away from getting our first race on the track. It's AFT Production Twin Semifinals. Brad, that Production Twin Semifinal, the championship could be decided tonight. It's between the 43 and the 1. Rispoli has never won an AFT championship. Corey Texter won his first last year. Can he win the championship tonight? I'm talking about the 43. Uh, it's very well possible. I mean, it's uh, it's his championship to lose right now. Um, really, Corey Texter has to hope for a uh, you know some bad luck for for James Spoli. I mean, don't really want to wish bad luck on anybody, but uh, on a track like this, it could very well happen. You know, short track racing. Uh, you know, you can see turn one incidents happen. Uh, sometimes just little things happen with the motorcycle. Uh, really, haven't seen any you know bad luck out of 
uh, James Raspoli all this year, really not so much out of Corey either. And usually, uh, you know, it comes down to a championship. One rider at least has, or both riders at least have one race where they have something happen, whether it be a mechanical failure or a crash or something bad happens. And really, neither one of them have had that. And both for, that goes for Briar Bauman and Jared Mees, really, they, uh, they haven't had any uh, bad, bad luck this year as well. So, uh, like I said, don't want to wish that on anybody, but it's something that could happen at any race, and especially here on a short track. So I think Corey Texter, that's uh, what he's uh, hoping for right now. For you folks just tuning in, there was a blue groove that was starting to form on the track. So during our break between qualifying and opening ceremonies, they went out there, they've torn up the track, they put a lot of moisture on the racetrack, and right now they've got the all-new Honda Talon out there kind of scuffing the track in right now, Brad. And I think that's a good move, trying to take the, the slimy stuff from the water truck and, and kind of brushing that off. They've got the same tread, you know, or the same rubber compound as they have in the Dunlop tires that our racers are going to be using tonight. Yeah, I definitely think it's a great idea. This uh, racetrack, when the uh, su sun starts to go down like this and they resurface the racetrack, put a lot of water on it, does get a little bit uh, greasy, slimy on top. And sometimes in the past, we've seen that first heat race when they go out, uh, you know, we see some guys slide out right away just because it hasn't been scuffed in yet. And this Honda Talon's getting that out of the way so these guys can come out on the track and be confident that the, the racetrack's ready to go and hammer down. First time ever twins have been on this racetrack. What would you think through practice and then qualifying? A few of those riders touched the ground. Breyer was one of them. Jeffrey Carver hit the ground. There was a couple others that went down. Nobody went down hard, but are they just out there feeling it out, or, or why do you think we had a few riders that went down? Uh, I mean, we've seen some riders go down, uh, whether they're on twins or on 450s. I mean, these guys are pushing the limits and trying to, trying to go as fast as they possibly can, and sometimes you... Uh, got to fall down to find out how fast you can go and I think that's what those guys were doing um, but these uh, twin cylinder engine bikes they're definitely a little bit more of a handful to ride out here than a 450 I mean they they do weigh about 100 pounds more and have you know roughly about 40 more horsepower so definitely a little bit more of a motorcycle uh, to, to hold on to but times were pretty close uh correct me if i'm wrong i think that the uh the 450s were it's a tad bit faster the, the top guys were uh but the the twins are right there so uh the the twins are definitely not far off for uh how much more technical it would be to get one of those around here luckily the track wasn't crazy rough uh through qualifying there was some uh some holes developing and definitely getting some uh some more square edge holes on the back side of the straightaway as it typically forms here but uh so far it's uh you know they're they're getting around this racetrack really well the engines come to life down there in the uh, pit area they enter and exit the racetrack outside turn number three the pits are off the back straightaway and outside of turn number three as well production twins aft production twins will be first two uh, semi-finals will take all the riders to the main event they're racing for their starting spot in the main on the pole is our defending champ the number one that's Corey Texter, willow street pennsylvania on the gng yamaha the 10 johnny lewis center hill florida on the moto anatomy royal infield the 49 the california kid chad coast fremont California, Wally Brown Racing, uh, Harley Davidson XG750, the 96 Cody John Cox, Attica, New York, Sunny Side Cycle, Luzak Racing, Yamaha. Then that's the 96. Row two, the 42 Jeremiah Duffy. He's from Guilford, Indiana, Sammy O Racing, ERT Kawasaki. And the last bike out there starting six will be uh, Jimmy McAllister on the number 50 bike from Petaluma, California, J Mac Racing, Kawasaki of Reno Entry. We're set to go with our first semifinal of the night for the AFT classes. It is eight laps to get one lap to check out the racetrack. Go check it out right now, Brad. How important is this siding lap since they just changed the track? Oh, it's really important. I mean, this racetrack is completely different from when they uh, last went out on it the last qualifying session. It'd more be similar to their first practice session when they went out. So definitely uh, good to see uh, what this racetrack has changed up before they, uh, you know, have to hit the green light and go. Sounds good. So they're checking out. Looks like they gave them a couple of, a couple of laps, not just one lap. Again, the, uh, the races in the semifinals are all eight laps apiece, eight lap semifinals, and then they'll have a timed main event. The production twins will be racing six minutes plus two laps. Lap traffic may be a factor. We saw that uh, as a factor a couple different races so far. But, uh, you know, it's the same race for everybody. And it doesn't matter. If you're, if you're battling for last place, you don't want to move over. But we'll have to, it, lap riders may be a factor tonight. Yeah, I think they definitely will be. I mean, they've been a, a factor on the bigger tracks. I, I definitely think they will be here. But it, it's hard for the lap riders when somebody's coming up. They have their own race that they're trying to attend to. And they don't have rearview mirrors, so they don't know when they're coming up on them. So and, uh, hopefully everybody can just get through clean tonight and 
go as fast as they can. It'd be hard to get out of the way in this tight, short track here at Daytona Flat Track. On Twins, here we go. First race ever. Production Twins, semifinal number one. Watch this with green light. Clutch is coming out. Yeah. 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 champion was Johnny Lewis. Johnny Lewis actually won his first ever Grand National right here. In Daytona. Well, one rider down, looks like possibly Chad Coase with that Cody John Cox. So. That's the 50 by Jimmy McAllister. They're still racing in turn number one. They keep on going. We're, red, we're green until we see a red or a checkered in flat track. Johnny Lewis out in front. Corey Chester is second, Chad Coase third. John Cox is fourth. Look at how tight those four riders are. Yeah, they're fight, really tight together. Whoa, Corey Texter gets all sorts of sideways. Gives Johnny Lewis a couple bike length lead now. Uh, Johnny Lewis looking really good on the Royal Enfield. That bike, uh, we all kind of predicted that this racetrack would suit uh, its strengths. And Johnny Lewis has also gone really good here in the past as well. well he's the winner here at the Daytona Short Track. Show him that's why right here in this uh, semifinal. Johnny Lewis, JL10 on the Royal Enfield. The bike made in India. It's an FT twin prototype bike. They're doing some research and development here in 2020. We expect to see him at more races next year in 2021 on American Flat Track. So it's out in front. It's Johnny Lewis, Corey Texter, Cody Johncox third. Chad Coase is fourth. Jeremiah Duffy and Jimmy McAllister, who fell off in the first corner. He's going back there in the sixth position. Johnny Lewis is a good get getting into the corner really well, getting it slowed up, not necessarily wasting a whole lot of time in the center of the corner. Gets it upright on top of the tire and Whoa, gets there goes John Cox off the track. Sorry, uh, Brad. Almost up in the air fence. Uh, I was saying that, yeah, Johnny Lewis gets the bike up on top of the tire, gets it up on the fat part of the tire with the most grip and gets a good run coming off the corner. Johnny Lewis out front. JL10 from... Central Hill, Florida, originally from Pennsylvania, makes his home down here in Florida. He uh, does the Moto Anatomy Ride School that the, the girls in the Royal Enfield Bill Train Race crew were just at during this week as they make their way down here to Daytona. So it's Johnny Lewis pulled away. Port Texter is second. Chad Post is now third. John Cox fourth. Duffy fifth. And Jimmy McAllister rounding out your field. The top two spots will be on the front row of tonight's main event here in the FT Production Twins. Corey Texter isn't falling off too much. He's uh, keeping decent pace with Johnny Lewis since he made that almost get off move here in the middle of uh, turns one and two. But uh, you're going to have to be pretty aggressive to be able to make up time on, on a track like this, but not too aggressive to make a mistake. Johnny Lewis, you can see him you know, sliding forward, getting all the weight on that front tire, that front wheel to uh, help steer the bike, but then he comes off the course, slides way back, and he takes a look over his shoulder as the checker slides out. But we'll see that a little bit more of Sam Howard a little bit later on. But Johnny Lewis wins semifinal number one. Lewis is your winner on the 10 bike. Corey Texter is second. Chad Coast is third. Cody John Cox is fourth. Jeremiah Duffy is fifth. And right there, Jimmy McAllister, who fell off earlier, he ends up in the sixth position. So everybody making some noise for Johnny Lewis, one of the popular riders down there in the pit area. And, of course, he is with the Royal Infield team. And it's pretty cool to see the Royal Infield winning semifinal number one. Brad, up next, AFT Production Twins semifinal number two. You got the 43 bike, your points leader. He will be on the pole. He's out of Londonbury, New Hampshire, on the latest motors racing Harley. And he's had one heck of a season. Yeah, he really has. Uh, James Spoli has put on a clinic at a lot of the races this, this year. Uh, he's coming into his own. He hasn't, uh, he's been away from flat track for, for quite a few years. Came back last year and just uh, Alright, we'll take a look at a replay before we'll get back into this next race, but a replay of the start. You can see where the number 50 bike goes on down. The air horns come out as Rispoli moves on to the race. Oh, well, it looks like the 50 just lost the front end. Jeremiah Duffy has nowhere to go, but somehow barely misses him right there. But that was McAllister who lost the front end. Uh, so we'll get into the lineup, and then they'll take uh, a couple of laps to check out the racetrack. On the pole, again, the 43 of James Rispoli brought his, uh, his cheerleaders are here with him with the air horns. The 25 is Ben Lau from Holly, Michigan. 175 is Pat Buchanan. Buchanan from White Lake, Michigan. 68, Ryan Barnes from Moton, Pennsylvania. I just heard he is a scratch in this one. Row number two, the 64, Danny Eslick. Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And at the back of the pack, starting last, is the 123, Shelby Miller. They get one lap to check out the racetrack. Maybe it looks like two laps to check it out. I like what they're doing. The Rispoli on the 43, Harley Davidson. He can lock up the championship tonight. He's got a, a pretty big gap coming in. He's got 38 points ahead of Corey Texter, who just finished second in that last race. So, we're probably trying to see what he can do. Of course, the better starting spot you have in that semifinal, the better you will be off in that main event. So, the 43 of Rispoli. 
Sponsored by Latest Motors Racing, Pro Beam, Evo Technology, Fast Track Racing, the 43 bike. His rider coach is smoking Joe Kopp, who always went good down here in Daytona. Maybe not on this track, but he always did good at Municipal Stadium. So he's uh, got some pointers for the 43. I talked about it a little bit, Brad, but they call this moon dirt. It's kind of white. It's kind of different. I think they, you know, the space shuttle brought it back from the moon. I, I don't know. <laughs> but it's really a different ma material. It really is. I mean, when it's wet like this, it smells like concrete. And uh, after it settles up dry, it gets hard like concrete, too. So it kind of has that slippery feeling of, like, limestone uh, or sandstone down at the river when it gets wet. So it's... Uh, definitely a different type of dirt never uh don't really see in any other way, any other place but down here in florida on daytona short track here we go production twin semi-final number two they will all go to the main event five bikes out there the 43 you look for the whole shot the one. ben Lau's right there pat buchanan around the outside the 175 but he goes wide he's leaving the throttle on he's trying to take the lead off of turn number two yeah pat buchanan tried to go up around the outside he does here Trying to go around the high side, gets a turn. James Foley's going to lead the first lap, though. He's got, Buchanan's got his hands full. Ben Lau goes up the inside. Now Pat drops to the inside of the racetrack. So Buchanan was not scared to go around the outside. On the first lap, he might as well try something different if you're in some traffic. And uh, that, that high line might come in later on tonight. We'll have to keep an, keep an eye on the racetrack. Definitely, Scotty. It, uh, as the cushion uh, the dirt starts to uh, get a little bit more up, there's going to get a little bit of a cushion up there. and could potentially be some better grip than right on the bottom. There is Pat Buchanan, the 175, has his hands full with the 25 of Ben Lau. Lau finished up third last weekend at Charlotte. Almost pulled off a second place finish last weekend. Rispoli still in control of the 43 out in front at Daytona. Uh, James Rispoli looking really smooth out front. I mean, this is a, a track where smooth is key. Anytime you uh, try to override more cycle, you can almost hurt yourself more than go forward. And, so you definitely want to keep the mistakes to a minimum. Pat Buchanan second, Ben Lyle looking for a way around. He wants to get on that front row of tonight's main event. Yeah, he's pressuring Pat if, uh, well, he oh. gets a good run around the outside here. It's going to be the long way around the racetrack, but he got a good run. Down in the outside around in turn number three, Ben Lyle's letting him hang out. Michigan rider. Ah, that's good. He, wow. There's that cushion we were talking about. Seems like there's a little bit of grip up there. Made it work for him. Ben Lau making the high line work. Two Michigan riders duking it out for second and third. Now Ben Lau's in second. Pat Buchanan slides back to third. They're all chasing the 43. James the Rocket Rispoli pulling away. And James is getting the, uh, the power to the ground. Scooting back on the seat, as you were saying, and what Johnny Lewis was doing before. They try to scoot their uh, their butt back to the far part of the seat, get the weight most over the uh, the rear tire, extend their arms, and just, yeah, try to get that weight transfer to get the power to the ground. Rispoli in the lead, the heart of the XG 750 Kawasaki in the first lap, sorry, Yamaha in second, Ben Lau's the white flag is out. Last lap, semifinal number two, AFT production twins. There's a look at the 25, the Holly Hot Rod, Ben Lau trying to track down the leader. The high line worked for him one lap. He's going to come up a little bit short. Ben Lau has the fastest lap of this race of 18.87 seconds. So Ben Lau was finding some speed right there on the 25 bike. Yeah, he really was. He was looking great, especially in the center of the corner, making up some speed there. That could be a good sign for him come main event time. So James the Rocker is fully taking the win on the 43 bike, though the championship could be determined in that main event. There's the Rispoli fans making some noise. Rispoli with the win. Ben Lau second had the quickest lap of the race. On that last lap, a 18.821. So Ben Lau, when he got into second, started moving towards the lead. Third spot is Pat Buchanan. Fourth is Danny Eslick. Fifth is Shelby Miller. And sixth, Ryan Vars elected not to start that race. The beautiful sunset out here at Daytona International Speedway. AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys roll onto the racetrack. There are two semifinals. We'll take the top eight to the main event. Brad, this is going to be the most bikes we've had on the racetrack at one time. There will be 15 of them out, out there and only the top eight will transfer into tonight's main event you got to get a good start and you got to make your way through traffic the 11 andrew luker 48 trent Lowe, 51 cole zabala 96 jesse janish row 2 38 tanner dean 99 kevin stallings 14 jacob layman 17 henry wiles row 3 75 blake lomas 46 shane narbone 44 cameron smith 15 mikey rush and row number four 133 david wiggin 161 casey cisco and the 123 shelby miller
I give them two laps to check out the racetrack. Uh, Brad, be before I got into the lineup, I said how important the start is. We saw Ben Lau, who got stuck in third, made his way up to second, and then had the fastest lap. So the start is very important. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, if you don't get a good start, you bury yourself back in the pack. I mean, uh, by the time you get yourself into a position like second, like Ben Lau did, you know, you're almost too far gone to be able to uh, make a, a run for the lead. Uh, but, yeah, it's... Uh, it's definitely crucial, and these guys, you know, sometimes you get back in the pack, you get into uh, just some trouble back there, too. You start bumping, bumping and banging the handlebars with riders that, you know, maybe aren't going nearly as fast as you, but they slow you up, and yeah, you can ruin your whole night by not getting a good start. Andrew Luker's got quite a bit of experience. He is very fast out here. He's your quick, you know, had fast time tonight on the 11 bike. Are you surprised there? No, not at all. Andrew Luker is a great short tracker. He's aggressive, and he knows how to ride hard. Um, he's uh, he's definitely put in some good solid rides on short tracks, so uh, it's no surprise to see him out. Uh, and I think he's a he's a winner of the Daytona short track before too. So yeah, definitely no surprise. And making me get my notes out, Brad. You're really testing me right now. Luker pulling up on the 11 bike. He is on the pole. Luker got his first win out here in 2015 in the, uh, I think it was pro singles class, might have been GNC, or might, might have been AT singles class back then. They changed classes quite a bit. We'll try to keep track yeah. of it. <laughs> here we go. See my final one. Top eight to the main event. Oh, low. Trent Lowe started moving forward just a little bit. Had to grab the clutch. He got a bad start, so low goes backwards. It's going to be Janish with the whole shot. Luker's in second. A Yamaha around the outside trying to give him a run down the back straightaway. Yeah, Trent Lau almost... Uh, Jump to start there, but uh, no harm, no foul. Look at Mikey Rush all the way up to the third position. Two California riders, second and third. They're chasing down the 96 of Jesse Janish. Show me where Look at Mikey Rush home. going for the lead now, all the way around the outside. Wow, Rush is making his way towards the front. He's a Daytona short track specialist. He's won a lot of races in Daytona. Yeah, he is for sure. He did uh, get the greatest qualifying time, but come race time, he's moving forward. Beautiful sunset out here off of turn number two. Down the back straightaway, it's Mikey Rush in the lead. Janish in second. He moved to Florida just recently, so he's a, a Florida native now. He's originally from Wisconsin. You got Wiles in third. Here comes Luke up the inside of Wiles for four, third and fourth. Yeah, I talked to Janish last night. He said, yeah, I got to spend time in my own house, but uh, didn't have a bed here quite yet. Slept on the floor, but definitely nice to be here at home. Down the back straightaway, Mikey Rush. Last time by was a 18.391. Rush has the quickest lap so far, 18.328. Rush gets his feet on the foot pegs early, slides that way backwards. Trying to get that weight on that rear wheel. Top eight to the main. Everybody else is done for the night already in this class. Yeah, he's, he's bumping that cushion we were talking about earlier. The uh, All the, uh, the inside starting to get a little bit polished off. So you get into that little bit deeper dirt, has quite a bit more grip. He's making it work to his advantage right now. Luker slips wide. Here comes Wiles, tries to get up the inside. Luker shuts the door on the 17. 17 looking for a way through. Remember, 17 sat out last weekend. Here comes Trent Lowe, who's working his way. He's up to fifth after that horrible start. Tanner Dean, sixth, seventh is Jake Lehman. Eighth is a baller right now, the last transfer. Yeah, starting to get some uh, ruts forming off of turn four here. You see these riders, they clip them, and as soon as they hit that rut, they wheelie. He's uh, are only going to get deeper and more aggressive as the night goes on. What a race we got going out here. Daytona flat track, AMT singles, rushing the lead. Luker in second. Janish goes all the way back to fourth. It's the white flag, the last lap. Mikey Rush continuing to lead on the 15 Essence and Racing Yamaha, looking for his uh, another win out here at Daytona. Yeah, he's looking smooth and able to ride aggressive now. Whatever changes they made, he's able to bring home the semifinal win. And maybe it was the track. It could have been the track. He just made the track might have suited his style a little bit better. For sure. 15, Mikey Rush taking the win. It is Rush taking the win. His fastest lap was a 18.328. Andrew Luker finishes up second. Henry Wiles is third. Jesse Janish is fourth. Trent Lowe, fifth. Tanner Dean on the 38 is sixth. Jacob Lehman is seventh. And Cole Zabala gets the last transfer spot. So the rest of the riders from here down are done for the night. The 75 of Blake Lomas, the 44 Cameron Smith, 99 Kevin Stallings, 161 Casey Sisko, 46 Shane Narbone, 133 David Wigan, and the 123 Shelby Miller. Up next, same class, AFT singles presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Semi-final number two. 
Just like the last one, the top eight to the main event. On the pole is the 49. That's the California kid. That's Chad Coase. He's from Fremont, California. It's the Wally Brown Racing Suzuki. Starting second is the 52 bike. That's Shayna Texer. She is from Willow Street, Pennsylvania. On the factory Red Bull KTM entry. 105, Brandon Kitchen, Clifford, Michigan on the Donnelly Excavating TCD Suspension KTM. He'll be starting third. He'll have third pick on the front row. The 18 bike will start fourth. The last pick on the front row, or last spot on the front row, I should say, from Kundu, Australia. It's Max Well on the Kawasaki. Row two, 32, Dallas Daniels. 13, Morgan Mishler. Then we have the 54, Michael Enderbitson. 31, Dylan Bell. Row three, 169, Aiden Roos Evans. 19, James Ott. 151, Tyler Raggio. 34, Brian McRoberts. And row number four, the 153, Aaron Kennedy, and the 211, Trevor Bruner. Trevor Bruner won the Daytona short track, or the Springfield short track. Now he's starting at the tail of the field of this semifinal. That is how different the tracks are and how different everybody is when they come to different facilities. So uh, they'll give him two laps, two siding laps. The only Suzuki racing with us here in 2020 is on the poles, the Wally Brown Racing American Suzuki entry, the 49. That is Chad Coase. He'll be on the pole. They get a practice start. They're going to get two laps to check out the racetrack. Chad Coast picks the inside in the heat. In the semifinals, you can uh, pick the inside or the outside your pole setter does. Everybody else has to follow suit. So Chad actually de determined the starting positions of these of this race by picking the inside. Shayna Texer, the 52. Shayna back in the 12th spot in the point standings. The 49. Oh, Chad Coase is back there, 11th in the point standings. Those two riders looking for some good finishes here this weekend at the flat track finale, Progressive American flat track season finale here. See how they do. See if they can work their way up into the point standings a little bit higher, get themselves secured in the top 10. Chad Coase pulls up first, the 49, the only Suzuki racing with us. Chad Coase, Wally Brown Racing, Suzuki Motor of America entry, the 52 Shane Texter, Red Bull KTM factory rider. BK 105, Brandon Kitchen, Clifford, Michigan. He's up there on that 105 bike. And then the 18 of Maxwell. He's the only Kawasaki racing with this week in and week out from Kundu, Australia. He's been here all season long. 10 second board, it's down. It's time to go racing. Semi final number two, MT Singles, presented by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. A long light. If I'm turn green, Shane gets a good shot, Brad. Yeah, great hole shot by, well, it looks like Maxwell actually gets a hole shot from the top side. Shannon Texter, good start on the bottom. Oh, there goes one. That's Dallas Daniels. A big pile up off of turn two. Daniels went down first and collects a few riders. Daniels got into the back tire of somebody, and he is not feeling good right now. Yeah, that was uh, Shannon Texter got stacked or got a little bit sideways. Chad Coase had to check up, and it just kind of sent a chain link reaction back to the pack there. And I think uh, Dallas Daniels just got in the backside, I think, of uh, Chad Coase and high side over him. And then everybody else had nowhere to go. Yeah, stack them up. When the, when the track is short like it is right now, they stack up really quick. Dallas Daniels, who's already locked up the championship last weekend, was the first rider that went down. When the riders got to him behind, from behind, there was nowhere for them, them to go. Again, it was a racing incident. It like Shana, you know, got loose really quick, and uh, the uh, back end came around. All right. First off, all the riders are up and on their feet. How about it, Daytona? Put your hands together for these riders going down. Dallas Daniels is up. There's a 19. James Ott is down. They're ready to get back after it. I thought Dallas went down pretty hard. I thought he was going to be uh, sitting out, but he's already working his way back this way. He's already the champ, but he's not done. He wants to win more races. That is some heart right there. We'll try to figure out who the other rider that went down was. We'll take a look at the replay, Brad. Walk us through it. We said that Shana got a little bit sideways coming off the corner, and that kind of stacks there. Oh, that's because Maxwell kind of closed the door. Yeah, and then look at uh, Dallas. Just really had nowhere to go. Looks like he had stepped on the, oh. uh, the rear brake. That Was that Ott that went over the top of him there? Somebody. But it uh, looked like he almost stalled it. He, got, had, like, he had to get on the rear brake really hard, and then uh, the bike just got really sideways, and everybody behind him had nowhere to go. So we know the 32 was down. Dallas Daniels, he was the first one down. Then the 19, James Ott also goes down. And then one other rider ends up going down. There goes Daniels up and over, and one bike went all the way over and landed on the front wheel. 169, I believe, Aiden Roos Evans on the other KTM. He made the uh, bike switch, I believe, a few weeks ago. So that's Roos Evans. Here's another look at the replay. There goes Dallas up and over the high side. 
And the other two KTMs get collected right there. That was Rusevens that went up and over first. So Rusevens went over Dallas first. And then the uh, 19 of James Ott going down. So looks like they all got up. I mean, these kids are, are tough. They, it's the up-and-comers. It's the, 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 uh, the tightest class. We've had some great racing in this class. And, and, you know, three of them are going for it right here on lap number one. That's what you have to do. Yeah, definitely, Scott. I mean, this is a super competitive class. Got uh, a good amount of seasoned veterans in here and then a lot of up-and-coming fast kids. Uh, and on a short track like this, uh, you can always pretty much tell that there's going to be a little bit of chaos in turn one. If you can make it through turn one with no trouble, you know, things, the rest of the race is going to play out pretty uh, pretty good. But uh, turn one is always, uh, you know, one of those uh, tricky times to try to get through turn one. Everybody get through it clean. We had things sorted out. Again, that was a racing incident. I would say no fault of anybody. Just kind of was a chain reaction from the about second place on back, and three riders end up uh, touching the ground over there outside tournament two. Uh, beautiful night out here, Daytona International Speedway. It's the Daytona flat track just outside Daytona International Speedway. Turn one and two up on the high banks where we're sitting, Brad. We got a great view. Yeah, we re really do, Scotty. It's uh, a beautiful skyline here tonight. Uh, here about 10 minutes ago, it was really beautiful out there, a little bit of pink and purple. Uh, Definitely got a good view of the great racetrack here. Awesome racing so far. Let's try to see if we can get Kristen to beat once again. She's down there checking out what's happening. Kristen, you got me. Yeah, right now they're working on Dallas Daniels' bike, as you can see behind me. But uh, a moment ago, he was what well, I thought he was getting hugs from everyone, but they were actually deflating his suit. Brad, kind of take me through what's going on, the safety um, advancements that this sport has made, and what they're doing to get Dallas back on track. Yeah, it's really cool that uh, we've been able to implement the airbag suit uh, into the sport of flat track. There's uh, several companies now, uh, both Alpenstar and Day and Easy especially, that have uh, developed their airbag suit, brought that uh, technology and protection equipment over from uh, road racing. Uh, but when the, uh, there, there's an algorithm that, that they call it, so basically any uh, normal riding uh, circumstance of the rider on the bike, they, they develop this, uh, this computer algorithm to where uh, if any time the rider gets out of uh, a normal riding position, it indicates a crash and the airbag will deploy. Uh, so it will always be, you know, be deployed by the time they hit to the ground. But after it deploys, it makes them blow up. They look like the Michelin Man. And it usually takes you know, a couple, couple minutes for it to, to go all down. So they're probably just giving him a hug, just trying to squeeze the air out of that thing quicker so he can get his mobility back to be able to ride the motorcycle correctly. Brad, Brad it was cool that Mikey Rush was there. J.D. Beach was there, and, of course, his dad was there. Everybody from the Essence and team trying to help out and, and get that suit deflated. They're not allowed to work on that motorcycle, but they're helping out get that suit deflated so he can go back out here and try to race again. So we did also get another report. Another rider was down in that wreck was a 211 of Trevor Bruner. So if all of those riders can make the restart, they'll all start at the back of the pack. So uh, this one might be good. We might have some other riders transferring directly to the main event. We'll have to see. They'll stage them up turn them loose. The front row still has four riders. Chad Coase, Shana Texter, Brandon Kitchen, and Henry Wild still in that front row. Yeah, we've got a uh, full front row, but the second row is looking pretty uh, decimate, and we got a Grand National Champion on the back row and one race winner, so we got some uh, fast guys coming from the back that are going to be uh, trying to make their way towards the front. Eight laps the distance. We'll take the top eight to the main event. Everybody else is done for the day. Here we go. Watch it for the green light. Second like good start by Chad Coast on the bottom this time around, but no, Max Whale gets a whole shot coming from the outside. Looks like Brandon Kitchen around the outside gets a good run. Here comes Chad Coast up the inside looking for second place. That'll leave Kitchen up on the high line. It worked earlier in the last race. Can Kitchen make the pass? It's going to open up the door. Here comes Chad. Yeah, Max Whale pushing a little bit wide coming off of turn four. Chad Coe slides up in the second. Gets a good run now coming off of turn two. Down the back straightaway. It's the Max, the killer whale down the back straightaway from Australia. Then you got Chad Coe from California. You got BK, Brandon Kitchen from right up the road in Michigan. Brad's right a little ways, right? Chad Coe got the good run coming off the four using that cushion around the high side. Max Whale, now he cuts it to the inside of Max. Takes over the lead coming off the of turn two. Battle is for the top spot. The Australian, the California rider, oh, Kawasaki he tries and Suzuki. Shut the door on him. Chad says, I'll push you up the racetrack. They go wide. There's oh. Kitchen throws it away. Running in the third spot. Kitchen throws it away. Everybody misses him. We keep racing until we see that reddish checker. Kitchen's going to try to play catch up. I think Kitchen's seen an opening there and just got on the gas a little bit too aggressive when he's seen 
Max Whale and Chad Coast sliding up the racetrack. Yeah, absolutely. So now Chad Coast in control. You have the 18 of Max Whale second. Dylan Bell up there in the third spot. Rusev is from the back of the pack. He's in fourth round. Oh, wow. That's awesome. He's run that far forward. And uh, also Max or uh, Dallas Daniels is up into a transfer position right now as well. That's incredible. Here comes Rusev. He's now looking for third on the 169 bike. Aiden Rusev is from the back row, from the fifth row up to the third position in a few laps. Yeah, great run by, by Aiden Rusev is there. Let's see where Bruner is. I don't know if Bruner's got himself into a transfer position just yet. Dallas, Dallas is up to six now. And you got Trevor Bruner, who is in that wreck as well. He's back in 11. So it's still Chad Coast. You have Maxwell, Aiden Rusev. And now Dylan Bell is now fourth. Michael Interbitz and Dallas Daniels. Raggio, Shana Texter is in eighth. She's in the last transfer spot. She has to, yeah. Be aggressive and keep herself into this transfer position. She has a good qualifying run. She slips wide. That opens up the door for Raggio. Raggio coming through. Now Odds coming through. Also, Odds is another rider that went down. He's trying the inside. Battle for the final transfer spot. White flag is out. Now they're three wide for the final transfer. Looks like Odds going to slide up into the eighth position now. Odds got by a few. Actually, Odds is in seventh. So the battle for that last transfer spot. And here's your winner coming off the turn number four. California rider, the 49, Chad Coast. Maxwell second, Rusev is third, Inverness is fourth, Dallas Daniels fifth. We'll wait until they get sorted out. The top eight going to the main. We'll go through it. Your winner, the 49, Chad Coast. So two California riders taking the wins of the first two races. Chad Coast, your winner. Maxwell is second. Aiden Rusev is from the fifth row to third. Ender Bitson is fourth. Dallas Daniels also from the back up to fifth. Dylan Bell sixth. James Ott seventh. And Shayna Texter gets that last transfer spot, getting by Raggio on the last lap. So Shayna is in tonight's main event. From there on back are done for the night, including Morgan, I'm sorry, Tyler Raggio ninth, Morgan Mishler, Trevor Bruner, Brian McRoberts, Aaron Kennedy, Brandon Kitchen are all done. Ken, uh, Kitchen was one of the riders that went down right there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, he, he's, his night might be over. One person can use a provisional. So I have to take a look at who's used one right now and who hasn't. Uh, right now, they're going to do a little track maintenance for you folks here. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's five minutes. We'll have a five-minute break. When we come back, AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines. Their semifinals up next from Daytona. Let's get ready for our main event in American Flat Track. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one duel for the win down to the last lap. This is what I grew up watching. Riders talk over 130 miles per hour, mile racetrack, hands off the handlebars. I love it. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram is a proud partner of the American Flat Track season finale. Bring your season finale ticket stub to Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram and receive an additional $500 off your next new vehicle purchase. Offer ends October 31st, so hurry into Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram, where we won't waste your time or money. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram has teamed up with Halifax Health Foundation on a suicide prevention and awareness initiative called Connect for Hope. The program targets the youth of our community as Volusia and Flagler counties are above the state of average suicide rate. Last year, owner Randy Dye and his son Daniel presented Halifax Health with a check for $15,000 toward the effort from the proceeds of the Golf for Kids Sake Golf Tournament. Additionally, Daniel has adopted the Race to Stop Suicide theme on his NASCAR Pro Late Model. A team effort in every way. It is everyone's hope assisted with the campaign to bring the stigma of mental health out to the shadows, protect the future of our youth in the process. Hey, race fans, thank you again for your cooperation in helping our safe, successful return. We understand there may be some event activities during the event weekend that are not currently taking place. Some changes in our event schedule are necessary to ensure the safety of our fans, our employees, the riders, and their teams. All procedures for this weekend's events have been put in place to ensure the health and safety of all attending. Thank you for all your hard work as we continue to navigate these unprecedented times. Have fun and enjoy today's race. Honda's all-new Talon 1000X4, the official sports side-by-side -side of American Flat Track, and the same vehicle driven during intermissions to condition the track. Featuring a high-tech six-speed automatic dual-clutch transmission, quick-revving 1000cc twin-cylinder engine, Fox suspension, intelligent four-wheel drive, and stadium seating for up to four. The Talons are now available at your local Honda Power Sports dealer. 
There's the old saying, you don't know how fast you can go until you fall down, and <laughs> there's a lot of truth to that. I'm doing a sport that I love, and we all know it can go bad. And when those times that it does go bad, you want to be safe. Just looking at the helmet, looking at the craftsmanship, you can tell why it's the best helmet out there. When I put the helmet on, I know that, that I have the best in the business on my head, and for me, I've been wearing a Rye helmet my entire career, and, and I'm pretty proud of that. Our passion is the water. Over 40 years ago, Russ Brown set out on a mission to help injured riders. We fight for the rights of riders every day because we are riders and we know what you're going through. If you're injured in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance companies with just any lawyer. Call 1-800-4-BIKERS. These guys will have your back. If you go down, call Russ Brown. Motorcycle Attorney! Bikes are rolling here, Progressive American Flat Track season finale at Daytona Flat Track. Up next is AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Heinz Class. On the pole is your points leader, the number one wider, rider in the country from Salinas, California, Briar Bauman. Starting second, Graham Washington rider, 69, slamming Sammy Albert. Starting third, Oxford, Pennsylvania, the 44, Brand Robinson. And the last bike on the front row from Concord, California, it is the 11 of Andrew Luker. Row 2, Mossville, Illinois, actually now Washington, Illinois, the 27, Bugs Pearson. The 12, Jay Maloney, Oakland, New Jersey. 62, Dan Bromley, Warrington, Pennsylvania. 95, J.D. Beach, Phil Pot, Kentucky. Row 3 by himself, Whitehall, Maryland, the year 2019. Rookie of the year, the 92, Brandon Price. They're going to give him a couple laps to check out the racetrack. And this time, Brad, your pole setter, the 1, picks the outside because I think he saw what Maxwell did in that last race. Yeah, I think you're right as well there, Scotty. Uh, he uh, is always a rider to try to bump that cushion. I think uh, he thinks, okay, I'll just start up there. And it also gives you uh, a little bit more of a smoother arc in the turn one. Sometimes when you start way down the bottom, you get to turn one, you got to make such a sharp turn, you kind of get pinched off from the guys on the outside. So maybe starting up there, he's just thinking he got some smooth, you know, arc the same, you know, normal race line that you, uh, that you usually take. Well, it worked out for the, uh, the last rider, Maxwell. That's where he got the whole shot from. So maybe he was watching back there in the pit area. So the one rider has got a nine-point advantage over Meese. Briar Bauman is your points leader coming in tonight. The chain on the 44 bike is falling off the motorcycle. He takes it back to the pit area. There comes the backup bike. So they have just a few moments to switch on over. So the chain has come off the 44 bike, Brandon Robinson. They're going to take the transponder off of the fork tube. They're taking it to put it on the other one, and he's going to jump on that backup motorcycle. Brandon Robinson is actually still standing by the primary bike, so they're trying to put it back on the primary bike before switching to the backup motorcycle. The backup motorcycle is already fired up. I think they're going to try to ride the, uh, pr the primary bike. Time's well, running out. I they got to put the transponder back on the primary. If you're able to get it, you know, the chain back on the primary bike, obviously that one's set up, but he has to go. He does All get right. on the backup bike. Robinson on the backup motorcycle just makes his way onto the racetrack. We're going to go race in light and green. Robinson has to play catch up. Luker from the inside, but it's now Briar Bauman to lead him into turn number one. Now into turn number two, it's Briar Bauman. He's gapped the field by about five bike lengths already. Yeah, great hole shot by Briar Bauman. 
Looks like he's going to try to set sail here, run the cushion so far. Bugs Pearson working the bottom of the racetrack in second. Lucas in third, Sammy Hubbard in fourth. Jay Maloney in fifth on the 12 bike. Bugs Pearson sneaking up the inside, but drifts wide down there in turn number two. Yeah, Bugs Pearson's been looking really good on this new team ever since that he switched over. I believe uh, it would have been Texas. He, uh, yeah, looking strong so far. But Briar Bauman using that cushion to his advantage, trying to get uh, all the power to the ground on that uh, Indian FTR 750. Sammy Halbert's kind of hung out to dry. He's working his way through traffic. He's trying to get by Maloney right now. He's got Dan Bromley right behind him. So Sammy, who was fast earlier, now in fourth on the racetrack with 69, moving up to fourth. Yeah, these guys know they got to get top two if he has to start on the front row for the main event. And that is oh so important here on this short track is to get a front row start. Robinson working his way through traffic. He's worked his way up to seven so far. Now he gets by Bromley. So now Robinson, who started at the back of the pack, and just got rolling. He is up to six. There's your leader, Briar Bowman, taking a look over his shoulder. He did what Terry Pugin used to do, sands that bike straight up and down, and uses that body English to make his way around the corners. I think it's working out for Briar so far. Yeah, it definitely does, Scotty. He's able to get that bike upright up on top of the tire. That's where you got the most traction patch, be able to put the power to the ground. Catches a little bit of edge there in the middle of uh, three and four. Looks like the, uh, the cushion is getting a little, is getting bumped up the racetrack, kind of becoming a little bit more of a berm to where when he slides into it, it straight and stands him up, but he's able to keep it on the throttles and uh, slide right through it. Brad, this entire season, Breyer has continued to grow as a rider. Oh, somebody's down over here in this corner. It looks like the 11 of Luker. No, it's the 69 Sammy Halbert going down. He keeps it running, but he's at the back of the pack. So 69, Halbert has to play catch up after throwing it down in turn number three. Let me get back to Breyer. We've watched him grow as a rider. In the semifinals, almost every round, he goes up there and looks for a different line, and I love what he's doing. Definitely, he uh, always not, not one to follow the leader and what other people are doing, wants to look for other lines and tries things out, and it always seems to work out for him. He finds something for anybody else. Last lap, semifinal number one, AT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines, your reigning champion, defending champion. It's the one of Briar Bauman, the points leader, taking the win. Look who makes his way all the way up to that third spot right there at the line. We'll see how, how it unfolds. But yeah, third place from last. It's the 44, Brad Robinson. you got to watch out for him in this main event. So Robinson up to third. Pearson is second. Or again, Robinson third from the back of the pack. Just barely got it going. Andrew Luker is fourth. Jay Maloney fifth. Brandon Price sixth. J.D. Beach seventh. Dan Brumley eighth. And Sammy Hubbard, who fell off right there with a couple laps to go, he finishes up in the ninth spot. Let's take a look at the replay. What happened to the 69, Sammy Hubbard? He's going in high down here in three. Gets it uh, sideways. This, this gets on a cross rut there, and it seems like the thing just comes around. You know, these uh, got a couple ruts out there, and if you just get on the very inside edge of one, it just brings the uh, the rear tire right on around. And it looked like Brandon Price, the 92, maybe just barely touched the front tire of uh, the 69 after he fell on the ground. Here comes semifinal number two. It's the AFT Super Twins presented by Vance and Hines class. This is the second semifinal. They will all go to the main event. The five is on the pole. Jake Johnson, Coatesville, Pennsylvania. He's on the Indian. The nine, the jammer, Jared Meese, Sebastian, Florida, also on the Indian factory Indian bike. The four is Brian Smith, Benton, Michigan, on the factory Harley-Davidson Vance and Hines bike. The 37, Bronson Bauman, Salinas, California, another factory Indian motorcycle. Row 2, 67 Davis Fisher, 79 Dalton Gautier, 20 Jared Vandekoy, and the Wizard, the 23 Jeffrey Carver Jr. at the back of the pack. Last qualifying race of the night, race fans. Here comes the 23, the last one to pull up. Just like in the last race, the pole setters picked the outside. That's the five of Jake Johnson. Is that monkey see, monkey do, or do you think that's where you would start? Uh, maybe a little bit of a monkey see, monkey do, but I mean, all these riders, they're, they're smart. They watch all those previous races. You called it, Scotty. I mean, uh, Briar Bauman's seen uh, Max Will get the whole shot from the outside. A couple other riders get a good start from the outside, so it just kind of makes sense for everybody to follow the suit. And right now with that, uh, that outside line working pretty good with the cushion starting to develop, um, this makes sense to start up there right now. So we'll have to see if it works out like it has for the last couple of races. The five by Jersey Jake Johnson. He's uh, come off the couch. He missed a few rounds at the start of the season, doing it for height trucking, RJ performance, and Randy Roth on that Indian, the five, pulling up the, uh, the cheetah, her leopard number plate, the five, right? It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's uh, pretty cool how, yeah, everybody's been able to put their own little style on the number plates this year. You see the, the Indian team have, are there running those gold numbers, a little bit different, and then you see, like, Bug Pearson have the fluorescent yellow ones out there in that last one. 67, Davis Fisher has some ghosted in 67s in his number plate. There's a look at the big number four, Flying Brian Smith. 
Here we go. Last qualifying race of the evening. Super Twins on the line. See if the whole shot works again from the outside. Jersey Jake Johnson from the outside. Bronson Dalman on the inside. Lights green. Clutches are out. Take another good start from... Looks like, oh, no, Jake Johnson gets pushed oh, outside, yeah. And he's up against the air fence. Now he grabs a handful and gets pointed the right way, but he's back in almost the last spot there. Three wide for third. Here they come. Vandekoy pushes Brian Smith up the racetrack. Now he's going to the front. It's Meese. Look at uh, Jared Vandercoy taking over second position he for moved Bronson, Bronson Bauman. out of the way. Brian Smith started to come along through. Look at this. The factory Harley Davidson riders, all three of them in this race. Down the back straightaway. Vandercoy up to second. You got Smith looking for that third position. They go way up the racetrack. Here comes Goto. That opens up the door for him. Smith really wow. hold on Bronson Bauman wide that time. Bronson's going backwards now. So is your pole setter. Jake Johnson had the pole. He is next to last right now. Yeah, that's just what happens when you don't get the greatest start. You start to get pushed out of the way. These guys can uh, start to mess up your race and your rhythm. Jake's all the way by the air pitch at tournament three and four. He looks like he needs to kind of slow down to go faster. Kind of has messed up his rhythm. So Jake Johnson's going to try to recuperate. You got the factor Harley Davidson second, third, and now fourth here in semifinal number two. They're all chasing the big number nine, the jammer Jared Meese. Yeah, this is an easy racetrack to override. As soon as you get a little too excited, you uh, do yourself way more harm than good. Meese out in front. The last time by for the nine was his fastest lap of the race. 18.492 for the jammer, Jared Meese. He's in the lead. He's trying to stretch it out. Bandicoy's in second. Brian Smith third. Dalton Gauthier fourth. Bronson Bauman fifth. Jared Bandicoy did a great job in second place. So is... Uh, Brian Smith looking really strong on the Harley Davidsons. Don't quite have enough for Jeremy's out front. Looks like he's stretching it out a little bit, but they're definitely running pretty consistent. Jeremy takes a look over his shoulder. Now he might start going and scoring some uh, different lines right now. If he wants to, he just wants to see who, who was there in second, how close they were. Look out that back tire squatting really low on the air pressure in that rear tire on that nine bike. Yeah, this is uh, one racetrack where you can get away and run a really low air pressure. The lower the air pressure, it kind of flattens out the tire, makes that traction pack even bigger. Uh, helps get the, uh, the traction or the power to the ground on this really slick surface. Like, how low are you talking about on a twin? I mean, like 15 pounds? I would say probably about that, Scotty. I mean, on a 450, it's around 10. Here's Jared B. He's going to take home semifinal number two oh. win. Fisher and Gauthier go all the way to the air pits in the back of the pack. Uh, they're going at it. Everybody wants every position they can for a better start in the main event. There you go. Semifinal number two is in the books. Jared Meese taking the win on the number nine bike. Jared Vandekoy is second on the 20. Brian Smith is third, the big number four. Davis Fisher is fourth. Dalton Gauthier is fifth. Bronson Bauman sixth. Jake Johnson seventh. And eighth is the 23. Jeffrey Carver Jr. So that's the last qualifying race of the evening. We have a break in the action scheduled as an intermission break. All right, we're going to send out the Honda Talon to take a few laps around the racetrack. It's the all-new Honda Talon available in two seats or four seat models as it rolls onto the racetrack. Probably the most anticipated side-by-side -side to ever come out. 1,000 cc Talon-specific high output engine, quick shifting automatic DCT transmission, exclusive four-wheel drive technology. This is about to roll onto the racetrack out of the pit area. It's going to go out there and scuff in the track a little bit, and we'll do some track maintenance, and we'll get into our three main events. More about that Honda Talon. Nobody else does it like a Honda, and they're built right here in the U.S. of A. in Florence, South Carolina. So all the qualifying is in the books. We have three main events remaining out here tonight. The final three races are all timed main events. AFT Production Twins will be first. It is a six-minute plus two laps. Then we also have the AFT Singles main event, six minutes plus two laps, and then the Grand finale, the AFT Super Twins, 10 minutes plus two laps as the Honda Talon now is rolling onto the racetrack. If you're here with us, stop by the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Stop by and check it out. Get the event shirt from the season finale right here, Progressive American Flat Track season finale at Daytona. Stop by and check it out. They have two different colors. They have old shirts on sale. Also over there by the American Flat Tracker Clothing Company is the rookie class of 79. The rookies of 79. They raise money for people to get hurt in the greatest sport in the world, flat track motorcycle racing. So the Honda Talon, take a few laps out there. Stop by your local Honda dealership, check them out. Available in two seats or four seats. One of the most anticipated side-by-sides to ever come out, the all-new Honda Talon. We'll take a break here. When we come back, it'll be main event time at Daytona Flat Track. Coming back. 
Coming back at 7.55 for rider intros for the AFT Production Twins main event. Let's get ready for main event in American Flat Track. Be a one on one duel for the win down to the last lap. This is what I grew up watching. Riders talk over 130 miles per hour, mile race track, hands off the handlebars. I love it. Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram is a proud partner of the American Flat Track season finale. Bring your season finale ticket stub to Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram and receive an additional $500 off your next new vehicle purchase. Offer ends October 31st, so hurry into Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the beautiful boats located just outside the front gates. They are brought to you by Blue Water Marine. Blue Water Marine is located on US-1 in Holly Hill, Florida, just down the road. Larry Gardner and his team sell Chris Craft, Cobalt, Barletta, and Stingray boats. They warranty and service Yamaha, Suzuki, and Mercury outboard engines. A proud supporter of AFT for many years. Please come by and visit anytime Blue Water Marine. Nobody does Biketoberfest like Bruce Rossmeyer's Daytona Harley-Davidson. Two floors of new and used custom bikes, official Harley-Davidson motor clothes, parts, official merch, dealer tees, and authorized service. BruceRossmeyer.com. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. In accordance with CDC guidelines, we have enhanced sanitation procedures and implemented additional measures for social distance spacing and screening. Therefore, we strongly suggest that all guests wear a face mask, clean your hands often with soap and water or with alcohol-based sanitizer, and maintain social distancing of six feet between you and other parties. We appreciate your cooperation during this unprecedented time. Help keep each other healthy and safe. We're glad you're here with us for another great evening of American flat track racing. Hey everybody, it's Randy Dye with Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. Jeep Adventure Days and Ram Power Days are back again in October with bigger and better savings. Get 0% financing on a new Dodge Charger, Challenger, Hellcat, or Durango. 0% on a Chrysler Pacifica. How about a Jeep Renegade for $169 a month or a Wrangler for $299 a month and a Grand Cherokee for $269 a month? Get a brand new Ram for just $279 per month. So shop online with Easy Purchase or come visit us at Daytona Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram where we won't waste your time or money. Hi, I'm Daniel Dye, driver of the Race's Top Suicide, number 43, and the Arkham Menards E-Series. Did you know that 132 people die every day to suicide and 22 of those are veterans? 90% of those people had diagnosable mental illnesses. Let's face it, suicide touches us all. If someone you know or love needs help, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. That's 800-273-TALK. Together, we can race to stop suicide. Jeep Beach is back and it's bigger and better than ever. 2021 is already shaping up to be an amazing year for the Jeep Beach Jamley Reunion. April 19th through 25th in Daytona Beach, Florida, the world's most